does that mean if I'm you know streaming Netflix in the duplicate world, I need another subscription? It's like all these kind of weird things that you well, the, the start, latest to, thing start is that to ask. Surgeons will train in the metaverse yeah. before they're unleashed on real bodies. They always come. Know, why? <laughs> why are the use cases always surgery? They pick the most alarming. We mailed them about, risk We mailed them and say we got a barber app for them. <laughs> oh yes, of course. Back to me taking the piss up. Ian, it's absurd. You- Hello and welcome to another telecoms.com podcast, our first for about a week and a half because people just keep letting their private lives get in the way of the important business of talking shit about telecoms. Um, I'm delighted to say we've got a returning very special guest, none other than Neil McRae, who's still from BT, but not for much longer. Hello. Hello. Welcome back, Neil. Great, thank you for uh, thank you for having me back. Well, I think I think one of the reasons you come back is you know it, we we sort of kept in touch since you were on the last pod, and then um, you know for, for those who who don't read telecoms.com as regularly as they should, they might not know that that you're going to be leave your your currently uh, chief architect at BT, but by the end of the year you won't be anymore. That's right. Um, and and I wrote about that, and, and you got and you got in touch. Not to bollock me, I hasten to add. Um, uh, no, I left that to my wife. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but before we started recording, he's saying he's saying his wife read the story and she felt a bit protective. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think I think I was right because especially it's a funny thing about being a journalist. If you write about someone that you've you've met in person. That does change things. I mean, really, yeah. professional journalists have to not let that change yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but, you know, you, it, it is slightly different than just writing about a sort of just a name and a job title. Yeah, I worry about that all the time, though. Yeah. Well, because you, well, you quite often piss people off, don't I you? I do, but yeah. I don't do thing. it to just piss them off. I no. just feel like I have to be critical, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, totally. But then I, it does occur to me that... Or challenging, rather. Or challenging. And then yeah. sometimes you, you sort of think, well, maybe I've upset them. I don't really want to upset yeah. them because I get on with them quite well. But You, you don't want to upset them, but I never, you never seem you, to flinch from it. Which, I nor feel, should you. Nor I should feel you. Like I have to do it, you know. It's like... A, That's, well, it's your job, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and, you've, you've, there's uh, a couple of headlines that you've posted about me that got me hauled to the top floor a few times. Really? I know what so crack are. on. Yeah. <laughs> I know what those are. Yeah. Do you know, that would be a really interesting thing to chat about, actually. Is, no, but it's what effect we can have on the outside world. Because we're quite, we're quite insulated from it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, most people are not unwise enough to try and bollock us for our writing because yes. it cracks me up when people try to go to war with journalists because in terms of public presence, we hold all the cards. We can just write another story yeah, going... Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Um, or, or, or as some titles might do making shit up <laughs> uh, which I, I like to think well, that we don't do they've only got two and a half readers anyway <laughs> right. so we don't need to worry about those clients <laughs> um but but you can you have the power to do it if you want to be unprofessional and vindictive so yeah. i don't think i don't think it's a i don't think it's advisable to sort of be openly hostile to journalists but then it varies you know you've got the the sort of alistair campbell thick of it type of thing where mm. with political journalism and where where they can trade sort of access you know, they can basically threaten. You know, let, let's say if I if I if I was a better journalist and I was getting more stories from from anonymous sources. Let's say, for the sake of argument, you were one of them, which you're not. Um, then, then yes, then there's a sort of quid pro quo, and you can go, well, Scott, if you want to keep getting this goss on on BT and yeah. and our world from me, you better write nice shit about me, and then then I'd have a sort of ethical dilemma on my hands. But I'm not a very good journalist, so I don't have those dilemmas. <laughs> <laughs> so that's handy, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I um, you know, I mean, we've we've been a few events over the years, and and I always my goal is to try and leverage whatever I can, whatever I can, to get our message across, or to get the value of what we do across. And I think. Having a, you know, having a, a a position where you're able to talk to people and 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 spend time with them so that they're understanding what you're doing, because let's face it, our industry is very hard to understand. Yeah, tell um, me about it. So anything that we can do to help you understand it, so that you can then help, you know, your readers understand it, is a, is for me is a win-win. Um, and that's how we've, you know, that's how I've always tried to channel yeah, it. Spot on. Um, in 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 BT and and actually before that, but but it's also about you know having something valuable to say, 
because um, quite often I think lots of people talk about stuff I like. Why are they pump press release releasing that? It's yeah, it's like press releasing yeah. that water is wet. So oh, we we get some really redundant shit incoming. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, even uh, I mean, we had a good. So on a previous pod, we spoke about the the press event that that you and Howard held, and and I. And I think I might have mentioned on the pod, or, or maybe I didn't, but um, hopefully it's not indiscreet to mention it now, but, but I had a little chat with you after, and I sort of went, that was nice, but I'm not entirely sure what the point of it was from a journalistic point of view. And, and then you, and you, you basically said more or less what you said just now, well, it's just about engaging. Yeah. And then and I think you and I mentioned on the pod that you know, we can't really complain when people engage if they don't give us some really juicy story. Um, and, but then at the same time, uh, complain that they don't engage at all, mm. and and I suppose so. You got to take the rough of the spoon. And I suppose the same works when you're someone who people like us write about. You know, there are positives you get from coverage, but sometimes um, you know, Ian will write something that gets you in the shit. Yeah, and, and it's and, not. Uh, and, and you know, don't get me wrong. It's not. It hasn't got me. You know, it's it's just people understanding the 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 wider context. That's mm. that's the challenging part, right? Yeah. And, and but also, and also, but then also, you get people who, you know, and you say something in one way, and people interpret it in a totally yeah. different way than you yeah. expected, which which you know, which can cause some challenges, and and you know that that in itself is 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 problematic. But mm. um, look, if you say something and you say it, and then someone reports on you saying it, then that's all good Just from my shit, point of view. Exactly, hundred percent. So I mean, and you can and you could have some like you know I we try at, at telecoms.com and light reading we try and have a sort of sort of analytical, slightly edgy take on things compared to a completely vanilla you know this happened and they will yeah. live happily ever after type of reporting. Um, and that comes with higher risk because sometimes uh, in, in the name of being edgy you might get it wrong or you might antagonize people but I also believe that that people the consumers of the journalism want to see a bit of opinion there because you're just curious to know what other people think about stuff. Yeah and it, it, it becomes a talking point you know otherwise if, if you're just you know putting out everything that's in a press release then you know you're not adding any value i think having an opinion on stuff i mean i i think our industry doesn't have enough opinions believe it or not or it doesn't have right it doesn't have individuals saying what they believe you yeah. know because quite often you know i'll say something and then 20 people will say oh you know, i totally agree with you but they never say it to they never say it to industry so that we can actually jump through some hurdles and we kind of spend a lot of time mm. you know in a world of pretense Rather than what yeah, the reality is, say what you is. think you should say. Yeah. Well, do you know what? You've always been outspoken, and we've always given you credit for that. And I intend on this pod to test <laughs> my the, outspoken to test the limits of your of your willingness to be outspoken. The flying monkeys have been released <laughs> yeah. from BT's press d- department so to lock me are. down. Well, indeed, yes, <laughs> yes, I know. Um, and, and we'll get into all that but, in one. But actually, sec. I don't. See, this is the thing. I don't see myself as outspoken. That's that's the kind of weird thing. But I it, see myself as saying what well, I believe. You know, yeah, well, with, with, yeah. There's hopefully a semantical with some data thing that, to back it up. Well, you're if in an out, in an absolute sense you're right. In a relative way, you're outspoken because most yeah, people don't agreed, say agreed. what they think. Yeah. I think I think most people they go through this horrible process called press training or something yeah. that PR that guys sort of organise. Sort of thing people like to, us end up doing when we're skint. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. you know, when there's no journalists anymore and yeah. we're working for PR agencies, and, exactly. and they just don't. And it all becomes very anodyne, and, and it doesn't I, mean I th- anything. I think and that's I too early that. to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that f- straight from the uh, handbook? straight from the handbook? Right, okay. too early to tell. Uh, Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, before we before we get into that, um, uh, just my, the, the little bit of stuff that I always forget to do about how if you're watching this on YouTube or the site or increasingly unlikely on Facebook, um, you can also you can also <laughs> listen to it. Definitely oh, yeah. on Twitter. Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah. Well, we'll get into that as well. There's lots of fun. Can you even watch it on Twitter? No, no. you no. can't. No. Only, I think it's five minute max. <clears throat> two, no, actually, two the longer videos are coming if you pay eight bucks upon. Oh, that's go. it. Yeah, the and, he, and he's thinking of restoring yeah. Vine, which was a video thing they bought a while yeah, ago. It's all over. Anyway, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll part that for a sec. Yeah, it does seem to be all, it's over, all over. over. I know it's, it's fascinating. <laughs> well, again, which is why it's nice. It's I. I particularly cherish having a, a grown-up, as, as we've positioned um, Neil before, because the grown-ups seem to be really fucking everything up at the moment. So I'm, I'm curious to know how all that works. But anyway, um, yes, so you can also listen to it on iTunes, um, Spotify, SoundCloud, and loads of other podcasting platforms. Um, am I good to just crack on, Pierre? You don't have any other little producer 
bits and bobs to uh, say. We, city of the did month. We, do, we didn't do we, the City of the Month last time, did we? I don't think so. But uh, I think you said rather boringly it was London. No, I think it was it was somewhere in the in Manila. Remember? Okay. Oh yes, Tel Aviv. Some city, something city. Tel Aviv. Yeah. yeah, that should be. A bit oh, it more. is London now. It is London. <laughs> Sydney, now. Sydney, close second. Okay. And cool. Dublin, third. Is this where people are voting? Uh, it's where it's where people listen to the podcast. Oh, most. okay. Yeah. And it moves Sorry. around the world, and yeah, Dublin's I mean, not surprising. This is only looking at SoundCloud, club, huh? isn't it? Dublin's not surprising. Yeah. Don't know about Manila. Have you been writing about the Philippines? Or? Not much. Yeah. I don't think I've ever written about the Philippines, to be honest. No. No. <laughs> they I mean, were interested in something. There we go. Okay. So, um, uh, so yes, Neil. So, yeah, we wrote about it. So, you're chief architect, and you certainly were last time you were on the pod. And yeah. then a story came out. I think it was broken by our former colleague, Ray. Um, and uh, I, I, I have no idea who his source was. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then we jumped on it soon after, and I emailed you for a comment. Um, and, and then we wrote a story, and, and then we did a pod where we just sort of speculated about what's going on. So I think I'm going to start, why, why don't I just start by sort of throwing the ball to you, Neil, and you just, why don't you tell us from your own words um, what your current situation is, and then I'll be interested to know whether you thought we were talking complete shit, partial <laughs> shit, or, or we were spot on when we discussed it on the pod before. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what you said, but Luke, I am... Um you know, I've I've had a great uh, twelve years at BT. It's been a great place to work. I've got to play with one of the biggest telco train sets that you that you can imagine. Met tons of people, gone to f- you know all over the world. In fact, I was just in Tel Aviv last week um, on on a streaming event. Um, Pretty nice there. Yeah, it's very nice. I, I, and tech-wise, it's insane. It's uh, it's my third time there, uh, and I need to go back and be there um, for a bit longer. But yes, I mean, kind of BT's. Um, when I joined BT, I wrote a, I wrote a paper about what BT should do. Um, after I was there for about three months, kind of, I was lucky in that the guy I was coming in to replace was was able to, he was there for three months so I kind of had a handover which is which is a yeah. rare, rare thing in, in Did you join world. as chief architect? I joined as chief network architect so right. I'm, I'm a my background is network and that's what I've done all my life um, it's what I love to do it's, it's my passion and and um, and we had this three month handover period and I was able to, you know, I was really able to observe rather than dive in for, for a few months yeah and, that's handy and, and I kind of said crikey we're what 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 and, and it's not unique to BT. Many companies are like this, where you know people think they understand the strategy of the company, and and in, in a couple of sessions, I was able to prove that actually everyone had a view of the strategy, but it wasn't quite what it should be, or it, or it wasn't as good as it could be, or it wasn't as clear as it could be. And and I you know I kind of said to we, we had this this thing called the design council which kind of drove the technical strategy actually a, a, a really good thing where you, you know it wasn't one single person it was a collection of viewpoints and data and and and, 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 and insights where you know here's what we should be doing and and I kind of said to them look I, you know in telco we sell four things we sell mobile. We sell fixed, we sell TV, and we sell phone lines, and we do some business services. But they, used they to are, call that multiplay, didn't they? Yeah, quad play. Yeah, um, quad play, all those plays. Uh, and What's we sell and we yeah. sell things that are a combination of those things as a service, you know. Um, and you know, we need to, in my mind, we need to be really focused on doing that job as best as possible. So you know, in, in mobile, we weren't in mobile then. We hadn't acquired EE. <coughs> Um, we, you know, years before I joined BT, we'd sold o- what was o- what is now O2. Um, it, yeah. So I kind of said we have to be back. In- I strongly believe look, we've got to have a mobile part of our. So you business. were a big cheerleader for the E thing, were you? <laughs> um, so kind of, yeah. I mean, I, what what where we started was we thought acquiring a company would be too difficult. Um, yeah, so I, was, we, I was kind of amazed that they let you do it. If yeah, I, I, um, the consolidation I side. Um, I wasn't amazed about that actually. No, I, we were pretty. Yeah, we were oh, yeah, pretty. Fair enough. We were fair pretty. Enough. I mean, it, it wasn't like we were going from four to three or yeah. five. To well, we can't do that. Everyone yeah, knows yeah, you can't yeah. go from four to three. Yeah. That's not allowed. <laughs> but what? But what? You know, what I did feel was, is if we're not in that, we're, we're going to miss something. And and so, 
you know, actually we built our own 4G platform. We were doing small cells to start with. Actually, that went really well, gave us confidence. And then, the, you know, the, the business thought, let's go big on this, which which I think was the right call. Um, TV, we were kind of, you know, are we doing TV? Are we, we were partnering with some people, we weren't. And I was like, well, are we in it or not? Let's be, you know, either we're in it, bang, spend the money, or we're not, let's stop pissing about. Um, but I don't think you've... BT's done that very well. So, TV, I think... No, so, no offence. No, no, but I think... Yes, TV, no. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing about... There's two aspects to TV. There's kind of creating content. Um, I think there's elements of that we've done okay on, at least from the content point of view. In terms of the value, I think I think you're right to question it. Um, mm. and, Especially and the I, footy. And I think, um, you know, where we go... We're... BT Sport goes from that point forward where it is now. So we've got this joint venture, which I think is quite exciting. You know, it, what 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 we learn from TV is is it's hard. It's yeah. not an easy thing to do. It's big money. Um, lots of people have got different things they want to watch. So you know, I'm not a football fan. I'm a motorsport fan. People are cricket fans. You know, it's it's it, you know, football is a big part of it, no question. <clears throat> but it's quite difficult. But I think. If you look at the execution, so I'm I'm a technical guy. If you look at our execution on BT Sport, um, I think it's hard for, for anyone to say that, that that we didn't do a great job of that. We we're first with 4K. We were first with um, loads of innovations. The replace that um, was cool. Yeah, and and you know our app was 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 very strong to start with. Um, but it, it's a hard business, and and you know. Um, I suppose it's got but, harder though as well with the because when BT first went into TV was before things like I mean Netflix was still sending DVDs out in the post back then, wasn't it? And you had things yeah. like Love Film around, and then now we've got these Love massive film. Love Film. Yes. Oh my God! I used to be subscribed to Love Film. It probably still are. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, and, uh, it sounds like a sort of porn subscription. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it's a weird name for it. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, it must have completely changed things well, from I an think, operator's but, perspective. But, yeah, but even look at the TV companies. You know, yeah. look at ITV. Look at all. Even well, the we, BBC. we never have it on anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but they've they've suffered. You know, that's how hard it is. You got ITV who's been in TV longer than just about anybody, and they've had a tough tough time as well. So, it's it's you know, and making content is expensive. And then you and then forget the whole commercial stuff. Look at YouTube, where it's just. You know, three guys in a in a room with a a, a guy pressing the buttons and spe- spieling on for an hour and a half. That's yeah. massive right now. So yeah. the, like, the whole the whole a bit con- like this. yeah, a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> the whole the whole the whole content world has changed dramatically. Um, actually, the idea for BT Sport came out of the Olympics. So we I don't know if you know BT. We we did we ran the network for the Olympics. Um, and actually, I you know I wasn't directly a part of that. I was I was kind of on the sidelines, but advising and because it, it already had a lot of planning when I joined BT and uh, Kev Murphy who ran it uh, did a phenomenal job. But a lot of ideas came out of that. <laughs> and, and there's one that I use even to to this day. Or, you know, t- almost ten years on, more than ten years on actually. Um, which is, you know, in, in the network days, we pulled the network every 15 minutes. Um, Usain Bolt could have ran the 100 metres, you know, a million times in 15 minutes. So how do we know if anyone saw it? And that spawned a whole rethink of how we do network management, entirely changed and actually much more cloud-like before the cloud even arrived. So um, TV, I think we... Uh, the, the thing I'll say for TV is we went for it, we had a go, it was difficult, we learned some things, we, we made our whole, or actually our BT TV platform much better, it's phenomenal now, the, um, Chris and the guys have done an epic job of that, but, you know, the content side of it is hard, um, mm. and I think, you know, I'm I'm really excited about about the partnership that, that we've got, the JV with, with um, Discovery, but that's got a long, you know, that's... That's going to have a whole set of challenges ahead of it, and I wish those guys well. But you know, when I walk into the the studio that that, that the guys built um, in, in in the Olympic Park, it's just phenomenal. They they they, they nailed it. Uh, Jamie Hindhow, who's who was our CEO for that, they really built a, an impressive place. So um, I, for me, we had a go at it. You know, the alternative is not be in it, and I think I think it was right to have a go. Well, that's interesting. It's interesting how you phrase it as the alternative is to is to not be in it. Um, because I've always viewed telcos getting involved in content as at best hubristic and a, a far more egregious example of a misstep than <laughs> BT's ever done is, is AT&T. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Well, Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the big one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, and, and in some ways, 
in some ways, you know, BT sort of tried to do a bit more organic stuff. Yeah, yeah, they spent big money on rights to certain things, but then, but then, it's not like they you just went off and bought. No, I think. Well, BT was in it for a long um, time as well. That AT and T Time Warner thing just done. Well, exactly. Very, but very but, fast, I, didn't it? but the interesting thing from what from from what Neil says, I can I can, and this is you know one of the really interesting things about having someone um, who who's at Neil's level in, in the sort of corporate food chain is you know we speculate a lot about how the grown ups as i call them the you know the the ceos and the board level people make decisions and i get i quite enjoy presuming that the decisions are made less expertly than they would have us believe partly because my my understanding of human psychology you know we were all little kids once no one's omnipotent everyone lord of the flies everyone's got an ego Everyone's got biases. Everyone's yeah. got agendas. Everyone's got greed. We're or human. Yeah, we're human. Well, when you're a kid, you, you see your parents and like, oh, they really have their shit together. Well, yeah, and then, you, parents, and then like, you get oh, to no. about fifteen, and you're like, Jesus Christ, they're just a human being. But yeah. I think I think and this is a very general comment. There's not telecom specific. I see CEOs, I think, like to do big deals, don't they? Because it's something. Yeah. It's like it's like the HS2 project. It's kind of baked into you know, their CEO ego a bit. Building a big train but that's, but that's like it's like for me, I like turning on a big new bit of network because I'm a network guy. If you're a CEO guy, with some companies, hey, you want to do big deals? That's part of being a CEO if you yeah. if you don't want to do big deals you're probably going to be a rubbish CEO but Fair enough. but I, I, I mean yeah. I would say everything that I've been involved has gone to the board um, and, and actually most of the companies I've worked for it's about it's more of us convincing the board what we want to do is the right thing to do it's not about them saying you will do this okay. you will do Fair that enough. Yeah. but the thing I think the, the thing that um, our industry is not great at, and, and I, I say this pretty much every panel I'm ever on because we're still not good enough. Is things like you know, I, I don't want to, I don't know the details of, of AT and T and that TV thing in, in detail. As I know what it, it started and stopped very up. quickly. <laughs> uh, but what I think they, they miss is were they really thinking about customers at the end? You know, yeah. is 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 that in the forefront of their mind? And when we did. Um, BT Sport, we really had a view of how can we do, you know, sport in a different way, l- learning from the things that we got from the Olympics, trying to build on that kind of good feel mode that was there. We genuinely thought, can we bring something that's different to that? Not, you know, we and, and of course Sky are a competitor, a great competitor um, in this space. They do a phenomenal job of of, of um, sport presentations. I'm a big F1 fan. I, I watch it on Sky, and, and they're great. Um, and they've got their way of doing it. We wanted to try something different, and and I think, um, but it was all focused around the customer. Um, and I think you know it worked really well to start with because we were focused on customers, and then and then you know the, the and then as Ian rightly says, the whole content will change. You know, Netflix appeared and downloadable content. You know, all enabled by us as internet companies um, and, and telcos. So. Um, no, and Glam isn't even going into sport, haven't you? Now? Yeah, so. and, and and the UK only, because the UK yeah. market is also kind of weird in that, you know, probably the only other massive sport market is probably the US, um, and, and, and at least from a money point of view. So I think, um, you know, I think it's right to, to, to try and see if you can do something. It's, it's a, you know, we look for something that's close to our area of expertise, um, and and clearly the technical side of it was close to our expertise, yeah. and, and we you know BT you know BT Tower, I don't know something like eighty percent of the of the world's TV passes through that 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 node in our network. So we've got expertise. Uh, we did a great job on the expertise part. We did a a pretty decent job on on the sports side. What we recognised though was that BT Sport to really take it to the next level, we needed to do something bigger that was probably beyond what what, what right. we were capable of. You mean bigger in terms of just scope of coverage, or <clears throat> uh, every, and, and probably in every angle that you could right, think just of. Bigger. And 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 the key thing about that was um, thinking actually what do customers want and how is it changing, hmm. and and that sort of that you know if we were going to take if, if you're going to you know, and BT Sports a great brand. In fact, you know, I don't know. If, at one point, if if you'd watched a BT Sport program, you were twice as likely to buy from BT. Right, and that's right. massive. You know, and so those and that, are the not, sort of synergies and yeah, and that was not just in like, consumer stuff. That was in business stuff. You know, because you know CEOs love football. Hey, we need a new mobile. Let's buy it from BT, or we need a new network. Yeah. And that was massive for us. But it does sound like the focus has changed quite a lot as well under new management in terms of 
I mean, all anybody ever seems to be interested about now, whenever there's a BT call or there's anything going on, is how quickly fibre is being rolled yeah. out. And you know, and that was I was on the earnings call last week, and it was yep. a whole the only thing that got talked, talked about. about. And yep. I remember back in the days of Gavin Patterson, it was like how much he's spending on t- on sports rights, you know, and what's happening with the EE thing, and. It's so it that shift has just Baywatch been so dramatic, <laughs> you know. Um. And and you know and, and and again, so the third thing I wrote was we need to do fibre, um, and 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 actually what I found about all three of those things, it's easier to write we need to do it in a paper. Actually doing it is is a lot harder. And you know, mobile overlying, TV overlying, fibre to call you know to get something that looked viable was hard, really hard. And the the big thing, and I, and and this is where you know. BT often we often get challenged. Well, you guys did nothing for a long time, right? Why? Because the data didn't support doing anything. So you know, I've got graphs that say, on. So we've got our fibre to the cabinet platform that most people are on, or or you know, a good chunk of the, the country are on either from BT consumer or from another service provider, right? And the real the start reality is is that's a 70 megish service or you know depending on where you are but but for most people they were never using more than 70 meg so uh, hey i'm going to turn up and say we've got this fiber thing it's twice as fast as you need we're going to charge you more and customers will say well why do i need it yeah well that's right? still the attitude now though isn't it to, to some extent to some extent sort of 25 percent or whatever 30 percent. to some extent but, but the difference is is what we <clears> see in the network is customers hitting the top line much more often than they ever did before right much mm. more often so before and, and actually you know that 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 bit of analysis helped us really push the move from adsl2 to, to fiber to the cab but the same analysis now is allowing us to push customers to say, well, actually, we are seeing you use it more, and and this is the impact it's having. Um, Fibre is also much more reliable; it's easier to operate. Um, and I think, and and the guys at OpenReach are just nailing it in terms of build pace. I mean, nowhere else is building the, the way that they are. And 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 actually, in, in, I'd also say in the UK, even you know the Altnets and and some of our competitors are doing a great job building as well. Some challenges about where we're building that that need to be figured out, or, and, and and also and how do we make it inclusive so everybody gets fibre? That's another big challenge that we have that we as an industry haven't solved, but we've got some good ideas. But when you look at the reason fibre is so important is because it's it's the bedrock of the company. It's what you know. BT's been around for 176 years, mm. um, and most of that was fixed line. Most most of it was fixed line. There's wireless, or satellite. We're still in satellite. We still have big air stations. Satellite's trendy again um, and valuable because the technology's moved on. Mm-hmm. So. When when you look at it through all those lenses, we're you know we're trying to you, you, you're, we're trying to solve every cu- communications problem a customer has. Sometimes we get it really right. Sometimes we we need to tweak it and 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 have a few goes at it. But we you know the thing that I've tried to instill in BT and especially in the technology sides of the team is customer. Yeah. yeah. Right. And if anyone, I mean, I've seen people bring a PowerPoint to me that customers like the last word of the last slide. Yeah. And I'll roast them alive. Oh, way for people it. might want this shit. Yeah. Well, and this is this is one thing that that's that intrigues me, and I've long suspected. You know, you see, you see companies try new strategies or big bits of M and A or whatever, and and obviously they've got to sell it to investors. Yep. Yeah. And they sell it to investors in a, you know, for example, you know, you're saying you weren't sure what the rationale with, with AT&T. One of their things was was to do with these sort of synergies to do with advertising platforms and that sort of thing. And they yeah, thought, no one really understood that, though. No, I never really well, you can't fully explain it, it but, simply. It's not a yeah. good. It's like it's like Ericsson Vonage. No one really gets it. No, everybody's quite. like. But but <laughs> but presumably the people who championed it um, Maybe at the Neil top does, table but. at AT&T <laughs> did get it. But either way, it obviously turned out to be bollocks. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, I, it would be interesting to know, to speak to the people who most championed it and going, so what went wrong? Yeah. But anyway. Um, but don't, I should, one thing, though, yeah. don't forget there's two things to this. There's a strategy and then there's the execution <clears throat> of it. There you is. You still have the right strategy that you haven't executed it right, you know, and, and I quite often find that, um, you know, that, and, and I see that in companies that are saying the right things, but they just don't deliver on it. Mm. And, and especially and I, with M&A. Yeah. Like a tiny example... I should just be nibbles of deserve internally, and I'll choose my words carefully because I don't want to be seen to be slagging off my paymasters, but in form of bought light reading yeah. in 2016, and I was just able to observe how the integration went about, the pros and cons, I certainly won't dissect it here and now, but you see how 
you know, it's difficult. It's, it's one thing doing the M&A, and then you get the impression that maybe some of the people involved in the M&A go, right, my job's done. I'm just going to hand it over to someone else yeah. who isn't necessarily as invested in the whole thing as they were in the first place. So that's a tricky, that it's integration is tricky. Yeah. But, but also, I mean, I, I mean I'll be honest here, I, I hate M&As. Uh, they're so hard. It's all about humans. And they're very disruptive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you know, so you know, even when we're talking about oh, should we acquire a, a, a mobile company, I'm like, oh, this is going to be heavy, man. And, yeah. and I'm like, I'm just <laughs> thinking of, I'm, and and there are some people who propel themselves towards, oh yeah, I want to be in, uh, I want to be on the integration team. And I'm like, I want to, I'm running, I'm going the other way. Yeah, yeah. And I get hold on, Neil, we need you for integration. I'm like, oh, no, because um, one, I'm not the, I, I, candidly, I'm sometimes not the most best um, people person to start with I kind of have to I, I, especially in my younger days I kind of have this notion of if you don't convince me that you're valuable in 10 minutes you're probably dead to me right. uh, that was my, my, my mode of thinking I've, I've harsh ma- but fair I've matured a bit <laughs> since then it's about 12 minutes but um, the, the, um, I mean, does, I mean, does that mean we're valuable that you come back for a second yeah I've visit. come back yeah, yeah, it, was, it was about an hour and a half though um, but no I mean I mean, seriously it's all about people and, and then the people are linked to the customers um, and it is people underestimate M and E's. Every mm. everyone I've been involved in, I've done a, a, I don't know, four or maybe five big ones. E was the biggest one. Um, they always underestimate um, the, the people, and people talk about culture, right? You, you said that word. It is an important word, but actually, I've yet to ever work in a company where there was one culture. Yeah. Totally. The, the, you know, you've got, and and in and in BT, there's several cultures depending on which part of the group that you work in. I mean, we've got generic, you know, do good, connect for good culture. That's our generic culture. That's what we we come together on. But in networks, we work in our way, and in in consumer, they work in their way, and and then the same as in EE. And actually, what we you know, everyone's like, oh, EE's got this wildly different culture, and and actually in the marketing department. That was true. Mm. The techies, actually, we were much more closely aligned than anyone ever thought. Um, and, and you know, that was kind of, that was great news for me because we could we were talking the same language very quickly um, and, and able to, to really move on, on some really, some big key decisions yeah, the, quickly. the branding stuff was interesting because, <laughs> uh, you know, I, at the time of the acquisition, um, Someone that I think all three of us know quite well was was the main sort of networks PR guy that we knew at EE, Howard. Ah, yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and yeah, and so it was interesting to chat to him, get his sense of how it was all going, and and and, yeah, and the brands are obviously quite different. Yeah. We have we have these conversations within Informa. You know, what is the Telecoms dot com brand in the broader context of the Informa brand? You know, in some ways, it's more prominent because by definition, we're an outward facing. Um, thing, whereas whereas Informa is a B two B brand, yeah. but then Informa is a great big FTSE one hundred company, and, and Telecoms dot com's got about five employees. So um, yeah, the branding stuff's really interesting. I think I think they got there. It took a while. I mean, I purely anecdotally, I ended up shifting my broadband from BT to EE because an EE person sort of outsold. They said. You should shift to this. So, so in other words, there were bits, there were silos, <laughs> there were silos within BT that were competing directly yeah. with each other. Um, and, and 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 in some, I mean, there's some aspects of that are good, but there's also some aspects that are just crazy, right? And and we saw that, um, you know, in the early days when as as things weren't getting up to speed. And of course, you know, people are also trying to vie for position. You know, there's some, you know, we, we might have two people are doing the same job and you've got to integrate and yeah. what does that mean for me and again that's the human part that's really hard exactly yeah. and, and people are you know trying to you know become you know supermen to kind of you know well, I'm the best guy for this job which is great um, but uh, you know I, I always say guys just let's just step back to where's the customers in this discussion um, and, and if, yeah. if we're doing what's right for the customer actually the rest of it will, will be fine I completely agree and, and I think and that, that was the point I was trying to make about imagine you know pitching to investors and pitching to to other sort of C-suite people um, you can lose you can lose sight of of the customers and you know it, it's become sort of a sort of throwaway cliche to be customer centric but then you look at companies like Amazon that have always been obsessed about that, and they seem to be doing all right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, who is the person? Who's the who's the customer champion at the top table? Who's the person where when everyone else is hatching these grand plans and going, oh, we'll buy this and we'll expand that and we'll move into this space, going, well, 
why do any of our punters give a fuck about everything that you were just talking about? So I think I would it's the say... the easiest question to ask and yeah. the, often the hardest one to answer, basically. Indeed. And so, so and that, let me just finish the question yeah, sure, you sure. asked, which, so, you know, you look at that and, um, you know, we're, we're nailing it on 5G. Um, we've got a plan for TV. We've got a, we're, we're open reach are kicking ass on, on, on five or building like fury, as we say. Um, the key things are, and, and then, and actually BT's overall network performance, you know, when I joined B- BT was one of the, 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 the worst performing networks. It's now one of the best performing networks. Um, partly because probably about the vision I had, but also about a lot of hard work from, from a lot of people that, that, that made things happen. Um, but I kind of look at it and think, you know, actually BT's got everything it needs. All it's got to do is sell it and sell loads of it. And then life is good for BT. Um, so, you know, I'm, I, I kind of like faced in, you know, when I, when I told some friends I have, I'm going to BT, they're like, man, you're mad. You'll get nothing done there. Actually, I've yeah. got more done at BT than I've done anywhere else in my career. Because it's brand to some degree. <laughs> it is evolving, but its brand certainly was of, of a sort of stodgy, formless state. Yeah, and, and, there are, and there are definitely <coughs> elements of that. In, but like everything, you know, if you're passionate about it, you find the people who are also passionate about it. You build your own network. And I don't know if you've, if you've heard of a, an, organization, an organization called Skunk Works. Yeah, vaguely. So, and it's got nothing to do with dope. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is um this is a team of people that work for McDonnell Douglas that built the first stealth bomber. And they built it in complete secrecy. So um and actually the, I know the guy who ran the project. A right. guy called Tom Stafford, he's a Apollo ten astronaut. That's right. how I know him. I've yeah. met him. Yeah, No, no this is after uh, the S, this was the B this was the, the uh, stealth bomber, you know the one that looks like a triangle. Oh, the B- yeah, that's yeah. the zigzag yeah. one. So yeah, um like a boomerang. So, so basically President Carter was it Carter? Yeah. President Carter told the, the Air Force not to build it. Um, Tom Stafford ignored them and built it in secret. And the day that Carter Excellent. went, he rolled the plane out. And it turns out Stafford Hashtag was right. State. Ta- yeah, yeah, he was right to build it. Um, yeah. Maybe not right to keep it a secret. Um, but does um, make you wonder who's in charge. Yeah, well, exactly. But and, and this whole team that, that kind of built it was was called Skunk Works. They built I lots see. of other things. And if right. you see the the latest Tom Cruise movie, you'll see a little picture of the, the skunk. Have you seen it? Right. Um, the, 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 the Top Gun one. one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was all right. This, yeah, I thought yeah. it was pretty good. Yeah, um, I haven't seen it yet. I like the CGI oh, that makes Tom Tom Cruise look like he's five, but um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, I, and, and so I kind of, my mode of operation is to find who are those people that we can get stuff motoring and then you build a bit of momentum and then everyone, yeah. and then when people see success like oh well, I'm part of that as well and I, and actually the Olympics was handy because um, <laughs> I uh, I you know I was trying to get stuff done and people say now why are you doing this I was, oh, it's for the Olympics oh no problem then you know right. uh, whereas there's nothing to do with the Olympics I just whereas thought, if I you just said I done. think it's a fucking great idea yeah so uh, there'd be a bit of inertia so I was like yeah. I need to get this done for the Olympics and then boom one day we wake up we got a much better network that performs a lot better and we got better right. partners simpler network so sometimes you have to find indirect ways to do what you what you're pretty sure the stakeholders will be grateful that you did. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 there, I think there's 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 kind of two things about that. One is, you know, are you serious about it, and how serious are you about it? And two, can you inspire the people to do what you want them to do? And I, and for me, I lead with inspiration. Um, and luckily, you know, the the whole space program gives me a million inspirational anecdotes um, for me to use, and it, and it works really well. You know. Um, I I, um, I have a picture on my wall of of um, Apollo seventeen. The guys um, driving the moon buggy around the moon, oh. and people will say, "Oh, Neil, this is really hard." And I just point it and say, "That's hard." Sure, uh, they mean, would yeah. be pissed off, but they get what I mean. Um, you know, so uh, so anyway. The things that are hard at BT are kind of done. Um, I see. So is that what you link? Because I was going to, you know, my sort of smart ass comment was going to be, it sounds really great to work at BT, Neil. It is so really why great. The fuck <laughs> <are you> leaving? <laughs> so look, I, look, I think um, it's a really good question. I think in my role, you kind of, you kind of, you, you, you've, if I want to do my job the best I can do it, I need different perspectives. I need different experiences. So part of this is about actually I need to go out there and, and find some different experiences. There's also some kind of day-to-day things that are changing that you know I'm thinking, do I want to be part of that or not? So does that does that sort of overlap with some of our speculation we did on the pod or just about a general rejig and whether or yeah, not it's so, something that you yeah, there's, there's, being part of? Yeah, there's a, so you know we're, the 
groups kind of refocusing the network teams. Um, you know, security is becoming a much bigger, Certainly continues is. to be a much bigger challenge for us. So, we're, you know, there's some extra focus on that, which I think is uh, right. Um, but I kind of, you know, from, from what, what I want to do and what I bring value to, you know, I looked at it and thought it's going to be harder for me. And, um, and, 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 you know, I'm an expert in certain things. I want to be able to use that expertise because actually, from my point of view, I mean, I do network architecture. It's almost a hobby job for me. I do it for nothing because um, I love doing it. It's you know, so you know, I, I was um, on the way in. I'm reading something that's that's network architecture, really, not because of work, but because I'm genuinely interested yeah. in it. So you know, and I, and I just thought actually, and 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 actually, I mean, I was. I I kind of was going to leave BT a few years ago, um, but they asked me to look at IT, um, and IT is not my layer of expertise, but uh, I know a hell of a lot about it now. And actually, I saw that as a kind of a, a, a the thing about BT is, is it, a lot of worked there for thirteen years. It's such a big, sorry, twelve years. It's such a big company. You can move around and do different things, and it's almost like you're working in a different company. Yeah. And I've kind of been, you know, I kind of know every part of of, of the organisation very well, um, and and I'm I feel lucky and honoured to, to have been able to influence so much of it. Um, but I, you know, I kind of looked at it and thought, you know, I'm, uh, you know, am I? I'm at my best when I'm happy and I'm building stuff. Is that the? Is that what this looks right. like? And it just. So it didn't look like it for me, so I said, sort of phase I said that's time more, and go. more maintenance rather than building or something like that. I th- yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and but I think I mean I think there's other things that you know the, the, the telco industry needs to do, which is to figure out how it positions itself as something of value again. You know, we were talking before about results, um, and it's fair to say I don't think any telco outside of the US is doing particularly well, and even the US ones are starting to find it hard. Um, and I think there's, you know, uh, so uh, when uh, Philip, Philip Janssen joined BT, he, he kicked off this, as, as most new CEOs do, and I was expecting it, you know, what's our strategy? Let's just refresh the strategy. I, m- myself and, and um, Paul Seeley, uh, who's a good friend of mine, a great guy, you should get him on the pod, actually. Um, sure. Well, if, you, if um, you're able I'll, to get I'll, us I'll link you up. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's working in... Uh, Digital catapult now. Um, okay, did yeah. some great stuff there. But oh, he might not like me. I think I've said some very fairly sneering. That's all right. Yeah, you can that. he can take it. He'll oh, he'll, okay. he'll he'll correct you. Um, right. Yeah, we're well, good. <laughs> I, I'm but, happy to. But, be. but they, we we wrote the the kind of the network and, and technology strategy for that. And and one of the first things we said is is you, you know every telco has got to get the telco part of the business. You know the 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 mobile, the fixed, the TV and the the voice on and the basic services really well automated, taking as much human cost out of it, as much supply cost of it, as much kind of as much of everything out of it. So it's super slick, you know, literally like electricity. You know, no one's kind of on the phone for a week to get electricity, whereas in telco we are sometimes like that. Right. Um, we've got to run that as like you know like it is a utility, not to become a utility. Indeed. But to allow us to free up all the phenomenal technical and capable people we've got to then start working on valuable stuff like you know the promise that 5G's brought that's been bang, that we've been banging on about that let's face it hasn't really materialized yet I still think there's an opportunity there yeah we'll get into but that. then but then I think there's um I think that you know if we don't then we will become like electricity and water you know it, it, people only moan when it's not there um and I think you know that is not where telco deserves to be unless we allow you know, telco to go in that direction. That's why I get frustrated with things like Open RAN and virtualization. Yeah. Tell me how many customers give two hoots about Open RAN. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think it's you know the, the, this vision that you've got of it being a lot more automated and slick and it works well? I mean, how would you score sort of BT and and, and, and other operate the industry generally? Let's say on on getting to that point, you know, with or without Open RAN. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think so. When you look at what has to be done. So, I mean, and literally, I've been working on this since 2012, the Olympics, when I realized we would have no idea if anyone saw you know, Usain Bolt in 100 meters. We just would not, unless people were watching it, we would have no idea, and I was thinking. I remember where I was when I watched that. Yeah. Because I was, I was just, I just got married. Oh, ah, okay. The day afterwards, so it was, yeah. 
<laughs> and, you, and, you, <laughs> and you're going, all right, love, honeymoon's yeah. over. That is over. I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Well, so, you know, we, we, were, we were tasked with running the network with our, our partner, Cisco, uh, who supplied the equipment. And, you know, there was things we were going to solve for that. There were things we wanted. I was like, we're not going to solve this, so it's, we're going to have to throw humans at it, which we did. And, and actually, it all went well. And it was a great experience for BT. It was really gave the company a lot of pride, actually, to, to be part of that because the Olympics was great for, for Britain overall. Um, I have to say, I was an Olympic skeptic at the time. I thought we would balls it up. But, so, uh, so was I. And I thought it was yeah, really good. No, yeah. I, I, have to, I, I love to admit that I was wrong on that because. Yeah. because um, it's nice when we don't ask things up. It is. And, and it shows that it we can good. do it as, in spite yeah. of the government. And, and it's scary that Boris was the guy that ran all that. But um, yeah. um, well, so even I mean, this is a complete tangent. But you know, even big sort of leaders like like Boris, who have m- many many flaws, also have their strengths. Yeah, yeah. I was just listening to a podcast again. I won't go down this rabbit hole. Um, but I was just into podcast, um, an American podcast talking about the midterms, and and they were talking about Trump's effect on it. And it's it's um, run by this quite well known journalist called Megyn Kelly who was actually uh, a sort of victim of some of Trump's more boorish, shitty behaviour in the past. But she was being very balanced, and she's going, yeah. I mean, this is paraphrasing. She's going, yeah, he's a dick. Yeah, he's a this, that, and the other. But he also achieved this, that, and the other. And we have to be able to be sophisticated yeah. enough to appreciate that, that everyone can bring different things to the table. Anyway, sorry, that was yeah, a I mean, stream of the, consciousness. The TV so. thing is, because I remember being on a call with, with Philip Janssen, I think not long after he joined, and he mm. was talking about Automation a lot. It's quite unusual to hear CEOs talking about it. So yep. it sounded like he'd already had this conversation with you guys, yep. and and he was he was saying like the only zero touch service we've got at the moment is is on the TV, TV side. side. Absolutely. And, and I'm just sort of curious as because he's been there for a few years now, yep. how much it's moved on. I mean, the session we were at that Scott mentioned when you were talking about shutting down a lot of things. It still sounds like there's quite a lot of challenges there to getting rid of some of these exchanges you're talking about. Could the PTSD. be quite a few years, and you know, before we can. And there's a lot that you think could be shut down. It was a huge amount. Yeah, of I mean, state, uh, so, so so I think um, so, and that's part of the opportunity is you know, the, there's no point in us automating stuff that's not going to be here in five years. That's and and also it's not just about the automation of that stuff. Is how easy is it to automate? I think the great so so since you know the, the Olympics, we've been working on a whole bunch of new technologies. Actually, we started working on something that Google was also working on. It's one of those things where we both invented it, but we can't, you know, it was like you know four people invented a TV sort of situ- you know but John Logie Bear gets the gets the recognition here in the UK somewhere else and wherever the other guy invented it probably he's the he's the hero but we were looking at, at um, how do you get and, I, and actually I'm going to mention uh, Apollo again because I got the inspiration from this um, in 2013 I was sitting in Mission Control in Houston in Gene Kranz's seat who's the Apollo 13 guy and and um, the jacket, yeah, the white jacket. That's right. It's shame it's so warm. It's shame it's so warm in here because otherwise we'd yes, have seen uh, uh, Neil's my, my, my Ed Harris in the film. Yeah. yeah, Ed Harris yeah. in the film. Yeah. Um, right. So I was sitting in his seat, and you actually, I was lucky. I was one of the last people to go in there. They've kind of you can't go in anymore because they've kind of museumified it. But and I was watching a. They had this thing where they were showing how the you know some of the technical background of how they how they were able to know what was going on. Literally, what they had was every device in the ship was streaming information to a mainframe who then presented it. And I was thought, that's what we need in telco. We need exactly that same thing. And then I, I doubted myself. I was like, can we really make that happen? And then Netflix gave me... I was like, wait a minute. If Netflix can deliver TV streams to millions of people, I can deliver 100,000 maybe streams to ourselves. And boom, we've got telemetry. And then we, we went down a path. Google was doing something different. We And actually, I bumped into Big Cash, who's, who's also someone you should get on the podcast. He runs networking at Google. Really great guy. Well, do feel free I'll, to I'll, I'll, I'll mail him. help I, me do um, my job properly. I will do. Um, I'll email him. But um, he is um, he's, he's the guy who, who leads uh, networking Google. He was the CTO of Juniper. Um, he... Um, his team were working on something almost identical, and and what we wanted to have the, the thing that and we almost said at the same time was, we wanted to have a weather map of the network, so that we knew what was working, what wasn't, but also apps that needed certain things could route around the bad weather, um, and that's where it started from. So we've done a, a massive amount of the foundations of of what we need to build, and all the vendors now support the things we need. Take, that took probably longer than we'd like. 
But now we've got all the levers, all the buttons, all the capabilities to automate anything we choose. And and we talked about it at that event, uh, Global Network Vision, which is a new platform we're building in BT Global. We're starting from a green field. And and if it's not automated, it's dead. I mean, that is we're we're really in, still in it with that culture. It's lucky that we've got a platform that's end of life, so it's allowing us more freedom than we'd normally have. Um, but I think the industry is probably at about so from a customer provisioning side, we're all great at that. From faults, from managing network, from adding capacity, from adding features, we're probably forty to fifty percent way of the, the the journey. <coughs> Some more of the cloud technology that's come out, things like. Kubernetes and and cloud native that's helping us in a big way. That's you know, actually NFV was a bit of a derail because it introduced so much. We don't much. really talk about that so much. No. Yeah, thankfully, um, <laughs> um, is another kind of technology that everyone was jumping up and down about for ten years that no one, not a single. I could never figure out why we're doing this again. It's going to save us money, really. Where um, all you got to do is blow all this money on it. Yeah, and, and the life money. is good. Um, <laughs> t- typical thing. So the that kind of derailed a bit because NFV introduced so much complexity. It was it was you know you needed to have it on me, but we didn't have that. The, the, we didn't have the kind of things that the cloud guys that we take for granted now. They had, you know we had the, the thinking, the the protocols, the capabilities. So. But now everything's there. There's no excuse for it now. It's just it's about delivery. Um, so I think over the next three years, three three to five years, you know, if I was in your shoes, I'd be saying, "Hey, where are you on automation?" Because right. that is going to be one of the key enablers for telcos in taking cost out, but also freeing resources and capabilities up to do the five G stuff that all of us are wondering where it is. So, I mean, you mentioned this B- BT Digital, which is quite a newish sort of thing, isn't it? We're led by... I mean, yeah. Yeah. But is is the exist? I'm, I'm sort of unclear about... It sounds like it could be doing some of the same things that the technology unit would be doing, and I'm wondering if the restructuring has something to do with that and how outward-facing it is or whether yeah. it's doing some internal so stuff the, So, well. yeah, and no, I think we haven't done a great job of explaining that. So digital and networks are the two technology units we work together. Um, they're focused more on kind of IT and, and enablement of customers. We're focused at then giving them the capabilities that, you know, it's broadband or mobile or TV that, that plug into those platforms that, that customers leverage. So, but there's also a new area of digital capabilities that are not really specific to network services. Things like, you know, what can we build with 5G? Who can we partner with? What can we build with data and AI? Who can we partner with? Those things, you know, are new areas that, you know, we think there might be some value in what BT's got in terms of our own data, in terms of what's the um, use for it, our, our own expertise in starting to automate at scale. Can we share that with everyone? Also, privacy and security, that's a big area for us. We're in, and actually, you know, we're, we've, we've done a reason, reasonably decent job of that in terms of keeping things secure and, 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 and maintaining all the compliance that we've got. You know, actually, outside of the UK, um, UK is one of the biggest, actually, countries that, UK was one of the most countries that did a lot on GDPR. Quite a, quite a lot of other countries didn't go as far as we went. And actually, that's now becoming a valuable exportable capability. So it's the it? stuff that, yeah. So when when I go to the US, people are saying, how you, you know, they want to understand how we've done that. And it's not an easy thing. Um, so, you know, there's all of those things. But ultimately, we are both the technology department. There's not, it's not, you know, networks and, and, and there's, there's digital together. We're both the technology department. It just means that the thing that I, I used to always challenge um, BT on was, is, you know, we think technology is a department. And, you know, where does, where's Google's technology department? Yeah. The whole company is the freaking technology department. So yeah. that's how we need to think. So bring in Harmina and, who's, and, and our team, and, and Josie used to work for me that's in that team, they're, they're knocking out the park on, on mod, one, mod, modernizing BT's capability, but also building new stuff for the future, new services. You know, is it is it clear cut that they're going to be massively valuable or going to sell in you know in the millions? I don't know, but if we don't do something, 
more utility. But it, but it sounds like the vision is, you know, if you can massively reduce your costs on some of this stuff because you've got automation, then that digital bit can then get bigger. Yeah. And maybe you spend more on R&D and things like that in the future. And and, and, um, and create new products, new services that are that are close to network. We don't want to run away from what we're, what we're, mm. what we're good at. But I, I always, I'm going to use my, my kind of, my wave the smartphone anecdote. We have not innovated in telco since this came out, right? Mm. We were brilliant at getting stuff to here, right? You, you seem to need a new screen protector. Right? Yeah, I dropped it. Um, <laughs> I dropped it <laughs> on, a, on a, I was glad. Like, I was glad I had a screen protector. Yeah. Otherwise, there'd be another phone I've, I've broke. Um, but what we, what I believe we need to do is take the network to places this that's beyond this into factories, into yeah. our homes, into that's the five G promise. It certainly is. And yeah. and and you know. It's you know everyone thought hey five G is enabled all the world's going to be automated you know I was kind of like mm. but five G to start with got such a bad rap um, across the board certainly from us um, <laughs> <laughs> I felt that if I'm not a cheerleader for five G who's going to be a cheerleader right yeah, so I felt enough. that I felt that. So we have, and, to, and, we have and, to push what's available, what, what we can do, right? What about 6G, though, Neil? 6G, <laughs> yeah, we don't need any of that shit. Um, I, I'm going to just um, have a little inflection point in the chat just because... Sorry, um, no, no, I've not waffled at all. on no, a bit. No but, no, but that's what you're here for. Well, not to waffle, but to, for us to listen to you. Um, just uh, yeah, to, to firstly, to sort of summarise what I'm taking um, about the you leaving BT thing. And disappointingly, that there doesn't seem to be much intrigue, and you're not slagging off your former boss. Or anything <laughs> like that. Well, look, I've, I've given them the I've given them the magic thing, right? I said to her, "Look, after I've gone, anything that goes wrong, just blame it on me. Just say <laughs> well, that there is that that yeah, bastard yeah, yeah. McRae. And just his blame funny ideas. Her. Yeah, it was uh, another you know another McRaeism. I'm sorry, we're trying to sort it out. You know, I've given them carte blanche to do that. But but it feels like the bit of speculation we got more or less right is that. Um, with there being a rejig in general, um, it, it's just a, a natural, um, obvious time for you to yeah. to sort of uh, seek, <clears throat> seek new challenges, which is more or less what you said in your statement you sent to me, and that that's perfectly plausible. I'm not, I'm not inclined to sort of um, pick underneath <clears throat> that, and you know, and, and fair enough. Well, but it, also, it I does what you were so, doing though now, Neil? Does it sort of percolate throughout other? Because are they getting somebody into who's going to be called chief architect? Presumably not. <laughs> no, um, I don't think so. And 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 I think I mean the the kind of nature of um, that role is changing in industry as well a little bit. Um, I mean, I get a lot of people saying, "Oh, agile, you don't have an architect." That's nonsense. Anyone who says that, you're talking nonsense. <laughs> um, and and I can say that because I'm safe accredited, right? If someone hit that with me, I was like, "Really?" So, and I went out and learned about it and said, "No, I don't. You're, I don't think that's really right." So, um, I, I think in in a world where you're, I, I hate the notion of an ideas department, and I think in 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 when you're in architecture and strategy, so I, I got two two roles in BT actually, maybe three. One is chief architect, which is how do all these jigsaw puzzle pieces fit together? The two is network strategy. What network are we building? Where are we building it? And how are we monetizing it? And three, making sure that those two things happen and on all the strategic foundations we need get done. So um, when I look at um, you know th that role, it's kind of, it probably, it probably morphs over time, much in the same way that the role of running a telco is changing into you know, DevNet, SecOps, and, and all that stuff. Um, it's, I think there are some uh, some really great advantages having someone like me around in, um, which is if you need to... So one of the things I'm, I'm notorious for is if it's not on strategy, I'm saying no. I mean, yeah. I get people say, hey, Neil, we want no. But no. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Why? Um, Why are you saying that? Because you've got to have focus. And focus... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll oh, so use... you're talking about people... <laughs> trying to pull you in directions away from your core focus and absolutely you and, and if they blinkered for want of a better and one word. of the best quotes steve job ever said focus isn't about saying yes it's about saying no yeah and i you know i'm notorious um for and it's not that i'm i'm like just trying to stop people from doing stuff it's just like guys we've got to do a good job of the things that we need yeah, to do deal with this 
as opposed to getting it wrong or or doing a, a bad job of many things. Let's do it. Let's do four or five good jobs, and I'm that's with you. I've you know, and and I, I kind of got a bit of a I've got a rep for that. I'm proud of it because it, we've achieved a lot by doing that. So that's one advantage, and also um, you know, if you think BT, we got like. Th- 2,000 applications and and you, we probably need 50 and we've got duplicates so you know a sales guy's done a great job of selling something to this department selling something to that department but guys you bought the same thing twice mm. and and again it's not a unique BT issue it happens in many big organisations yeah, and architecture all, all organisations will be siloed to some yeah. degree so so you know I, I think um, I think the you know I'm you know I think the new organisation and there's there's some really great uh, folks in there that. I've got a big task to do um, to, to kind of make sure BT starts to, you know, leverage all these great new assets it's got. Um, you know, they've got a, a, a tough job, but, you know, the thing I, I say to everyone is, you know, BT has no excuses to perf- not to perform. The Here board... The board, There's the parting the shot. Board, <laughs> <laughs> the board have been great. They've given BT the money to invest. You know, we're and you know, we're 15 billion on fiber. Um, you know, a huge 5G and mobile network deployment investments in digital. You know, actually, that's one of the things that I'm that I, I love the most about BT is if you had a really great case and you could show the value. You, you had an opportunity to present it, an opportunity to run with it, and and that is that's rare in telco the, these days because everyone's like, oh, we don't want to take any risks. Um, mm, yeah. So, you know, it's it's you know, open reach are executing, we're executing in mobile. We're you know, the, still even though we're swapping tons of Huawei stuff out, we're still way ahead of the competition. And actually, the one thing I, I do question is is, um, and and it's still a question I haven't answered is is, are we are we the best in a lot that's underperforming overall? And do we need to go even better than where we are? And I don't know the answer to that, um, but I keep asking myself that question. So even though you're number one, actually, is that number one of a bunch of you yeah. know, number 10s or is it truly something uniquely different? And I think for me, that's the, the big question Telco has to answer, especially here in the UK. Um, over the next couple of years, but Europe as a whole, I think, has got a similar set of challenges. I was just going to ask one other thing on the on the restructuring because I mean, you mentioned this earlier, but the word security comes up loads in the actual statement of it. I mean, I think even yeah. Howard Watson's job title. Is yeah, now that's security. right. And I'm just kind of one is that is that sort of customers coming to you and asking more for security stuff, or is it to do with? I mean, you mentioned things like <coughs> Kubernetes and some yep. of these changes that are happening, and I know they've prompted some concerns about you know if we make networks more software based they become could they become more hackable and is it to do with that at all or? yeah i mean look everything more and more stuff's going from you know a box that no one can touch to online and and security is i mean it's a core foundation that we just we just can't get wrong and, and if you think about it right um actually our brand i believe you guys can 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 challenge me i think we're trusted to do certain things like we're trusted to run 999 right so if you've got an emergency you phone 999 an ambulance or a, or a cop car turns up right um, and I think that if we get security wrong that trust will disappear very quickly very quickly and I think it's something you know we talked about 5G and new services and new things that we can get into if we've got a great security table stake let's call it then doing those things so hey we belfast harbor which we, we've done a lot of great stuff with we want to do a health and safety so that you know if we detect a human we stop the machinery if you can be hacked or you've got any questionable Ooh. you know you're just not going to let anyone near that so for me that is it's it's it, it's important to our 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 life as a telco as water is to humans it's just it, we just have to get it right and it's getting harder and you've got state sponsored stuff you've got you know so many different sets of complexity that in that that, that doesn't that isn't a security issue in itself but it generates more vectors for people to attack mm-hmm. you and that's the challenge with stuff like kubernetes and open ran it's not that they're in, insecure they're not they're just that the complexity introduces opportunities so when they're open and yeah. That, yeah, and you can read the source code and find out, well, this guy hasn't terminated this this construct, right? I can probably hack it. Yeah, that. well, this is the thing about open source, isn't it? People say, you know, if, if you if you sort of put it out to the community, then, you know, you can you sort out problems and you get it Absolutely. fixed. But on the other hand, people can go into it yeah, and fiddle around with yeah, it. Yeah, but I think, you, I mean, you look at, 
I, I challenge you to go look at the worst kind of last 20 security incidents. I'll, I, 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 I'm just thinking of, off the my head, I think most of them are nothing to do with open source. Right. You know, I, go, go test me on that. I, I, I might be wrong, but I, I think I've been writing open source since 1988, and, and I, I truly believe in it. But I also believe in, in how hard it is and how much effort you need to put in to get it right. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to download this open source thing and boom, I'm good to go. No, 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 no. That's yeah. not how it works. You, you know, what library version are you using? Mm. Is that a secure library? Is well, it, that's, you know? that's where the business model of companies like Red Hat comes yep. in, where, where they, they're getting open source, but they're making it what they call it, like, hard know, enterprise grade or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 So hard, hardened. Hardened. <laughs> hardened. That's the, I think that is the lingo, isn't it? That yeah, is the lingo, yes. Yeah. We've hardened it. I, just too much double entendre good, potential good, there. Good, good, good to know. <laughs> Step away from the double entendre, Scott. Um, one last thing before we just move on to just general sure. um, news and industry chit-chat. Um, there have been... There's been some, not by me, and I don't think by Ian, some speculation about what you're going to do next. Yep. Apparently, you're going to uh, work at Dell. Apparently, you're going to work at <laughs> yeah. some kind of West Coast. I haven't uh, received the letter sort of yet, thing. though. Or, or um, NASA. <laughs> so, so, firstly, are you, can you confirm that you that you haven't got another thing lined up? Uh, right now, I haven't got anything else lined up. Right. I mean, I've got lots of people asking me, which is nice. Well, that is nice. That is it? nice. Um, and uh, I appreciate that. We could do with a new podcast producer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should take. We should do a poll on where, where's Neil going to end up. Like, what exactly? I, I was, tell you what, right, tell you, here, here we go. Right, I reckon. let's do the poll, and, and whoever gets it right, we'll pick them out a hat. I'll donate five hundred quid to National Autistic Society for whoever gets it right. Okay, that's, well, that's, that's a, a good, so that's I'm a, I'm a fundraiser for them. Oh, that's it's good to a, hear. It's, a, um, right, my, it's my, a passionate. My do- my daughter has autism, so it's close to my heart as well. So uh, yeah, I'm up for that. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Well, so we got to pick. So we got to just start speculating, just, yeah, just blindly <laughs> speculating. Well, do you know what? From what from what right. Neil said and from his statement, obviously, what types uh, what, of companies? What interests me? If, um, names of companies. Let's put <laughs> the names up. But, but what interests me is like your CV says you can work for like FTSE 100 or you know yep. type of companies. But from what you say, you seem to want to be in an environment that maybe is a little bit more fast moving. So it'll be interesting to see whether you end up in a more start y vibe or or perhaps the ideal fit for you is a a larger company but that has a part of it that is trying to be quite disruptive and fast moving. Yeah, I mean I, I I don't believe that there's a thing as a slow company. I think if you've got the right vision and you've got the right um, inspiration. Any slow company can become a fast one. I think it's all. It's like it's about focus and saying no. So, you know, I, I think what where I end up is something that I'm passionate about, something that I can believe in, um, and something that makes a difference. You know, and 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 BT every day we change someone's world. You know, someone individually. You know, I say I call that world changer, and everyone's like changing the world. Yeah, but for individuals, we do every single day. Um, and there's not many places that you can do that. I, I kind of I like that. That's pr- pretty much what's kept me ex- excited at BT is is that knowledge. So um, I want to. I'll probably stick close to that. But something that's also technically challenging. Um, mm. I don't really get out of bed for easy. Um, and somewhere where they, you know they, they they'll support me and you know trying to make a difference in our industry as well. Um, BT has been great at that. You know. Uh, there's lots of companies where they, you know, don't say anything. You're not allowed to talk to anybody. BT's kind of been supportive in in getting the message out. Um, and for a, uh, an incumbent telco like BT to do that, I think is is rare. Um, and and I hope you know they allow folks to do to continue to do that after I'm gone. Um, suspect Howard's hair going grey might uh, might might have an, an issue on that, but. Um, you know, they, it's it's hard to you know it's it's hard for me to say anything negative about BT. Sure, in every oh. company there's ten percent shit. It's wherever you go, right? Um, yeah. But as long as as long as when you're you know the rope that you're pulling is going your way, life is good. Totally no, I, and and all I say is when you do get a new gig, uh, it's my turn for the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, Ray? <laughs> yeah, Ray, fuck off. Um, so uh, no, yeah. no, Ray's a, Ray's a good friend of mine. No, he's a good but friend. I didn't tell him. He's, he's, okay, well, I'll take your word for that. No, but no, he's a good friend of ours. That, that's he's always, a good he guy. Said, that's always he's a very good guy. Jokingly, like whenever we meet up with Ray, we always. Yeah. He, he gets mentioned a lot on this pod. He does. I suppose, he I mean, get him on the pod. The 
Well, he has been, he has been, on, he has been yeah, on it when he used well, to work. Well, even when he was yeah. our, our manager, he came on pod. He never seemed to enjoy it that much, did he? No, I think so. I yeah, no, did he? I, I just got the impression he. he ah, he was a great guy. I thought it was a bit, bit of a sort of Mm-mm. thing just to. He didn't have to. He wouldn't have come otherwise. No, I don't know. No, I, don't I know where he went enough. No, he I wouldn't get do the anything. Feeling he that, he, uh, that he didn't like it. Just I always felt a bit intimidated was... when he was on because he because he knows what he's talking well, about. Well, that is do. that is a danger. <laughs> It was before we started drinking. Do you know, maybe that was probably it. He probably just felt, being on a pub with me, he was just slumming it. Because I was just sitting there going, telecoms, hey, what the fuck's going on? Uh, and, and Ray was like, oh, for God's sake. Uh, um, but anyway, no, no, we, we were like Ray. I, when I say Ray, fuck off, I'm obviously in um, All right. Um, so let's... Oh, do you know what? I mean, there's... So there's two directions we can go. There's two things I want to cover. We've only got about half an hour or so um, left. Um, one is I wanted to pick Neil's brains on some of the stuff that um, some of the sort of mega trends that, that he's been, forgive me for using the term, relatively outspoken <laughs> on. Um, and then the other one that I thought the most interesting newsy thing that both you and I have covered a fair bit, Ian, is, is just just some of the carnage. It's just some of the carnage that's going on in in the in the worlds that we write about, especially b- big tech, and then and then obviously the telecoms world. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think let's go in a newsy direction, and then maybe we'll come back to sort of, um, Neil's views on on some of the stuff that, that might come from that newsy thing. So I think the most the most juicy story, it's not really telecoms, although they do have some interest in that. The most well, juicy story was that that Meta telecoms is the most is a sector that's most adjacent to it. I well, would, there so we yeah. go. Yeah, really? and, and so I, I think we can get away with writing about big tech and talking about it for that reason. And they and they use thank God networks. because yeah, without us, though, nobody's basically. Um, that, Thank that, God, that gets us down into a whole different discussion <laughs> about other things. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, actually, I mean, that might be another thing to for us to park. I, I, I've been well, to know what yeah. Neil's view is on on that begging for big tech cash, for, right? For um, by operators. But um, I think I made a I think I made a little joke about that when we had our get together in mm. BT Towers. Um, but yeah, Meta laying off eleven thousand people, mm. which thirteen percent of their workforce. A sort of, I think both you and I covered the sort of slight mayor culpa by Mark Zuckerberg, where he's basically going, Whoops. yeah, 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 sorry. Um, uh, he's basically going, during the lockdown, everyone went online, so we looked at our charts and everything was going fucking exponential. Mm. So we thought, well, well let's just assume that's going to happen forever. <laughs> and then he went, turns out, that was the wrong assumption. But a lot, he was not alone in thinking that. No, he I wasn't. Mean, there were a lot of banking... You know, I remember reading a lot of these equity analyst reports that I was getting sent at the time saying we're into the new normal now and yeah. people are just going to live inside. Do you know, I used the word new normal, new normal so in my I, coverage I did, recently. Yeah. Well, we need, we need to get that as a neon <laughs> light somewhere in a museum. I even found a, a, a big <laughs> Pew Research thing about the new normal written in 2021. Uh, it was really depressing. There were these things going on about city centres being boarded up yeah. and, and, and like the, the, maybe the, the community pub becomes busy again, but I, the city one isn't. I have to say, there was one point in time where I, I actually... I, I, when I heard new normal, I was like, this is a BS. But there was one bit, one time when I doubted myself. I was I went to... We, we were, I went into BT Centre... Um, it was just after the first phase of lockdown, and you were allowed to to go to work again. And and we wanted to get some of the senior team together just to kind of, I mean, just to see each other really, and and and, and make sure that we were all okay, etc. And as I came out, I heard that city's been boarded up, and there was a shop that had been boarded up, and I was thinking, holy shit, is this you know, really you know, happening? Really it's like some kind of zombie <laughs> post-apocalypse the, the, film. The city was was yeah. it was scary. Well, we used, said it was very scary. We did the same. Scott and I were coming, and I think one other people were, and using and Pierre was, and he's in the studio, and then we was not able to find places to go and drink yeah, cabbage beer. We were walking along the river, and it was just dead. I and, was like, wow, yeah, is this was, really true? Yeah. But. Um, but I just everyone that kept hitting me with that new normal. I I, I was like, if if I could, I'd have like a new normal button that punched them in the face. <laughs> I, would have, I would have broke the button. I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. But, and, and so that was so that was. It, you you know what I was saying earlier about how it in, interests me to see that people at the very top, very powerful, very rich people, uh, are still fallible. Um, and you know that just strikes me, and, and obviously hindsight's always twenty twenty, and all that sort sure. of thing. But it does strike me as a bit of a crude yeah. assumption. 
I mean, no. he, I, I thought Zuckerberg's memo was... Um, I thought it was quite good, actually, well, to be honest It's better than Twitter's you. one, that's for it, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, for a start, the, the package they're, I would say the package they're offering to the staff, from what I could yeah. gather reading, was really generous, uh, especially considered compared to Twitter's like, one. Well. like four months and counting. It was very, very yeah, generous. at least four months, and, I think, and, and, and he weeks. thought he wrote it quite well, and he didn't, he didn't admit to... I mean, it's not just the the um, the old normal coming back, and and mm. he, you know he did sort of mention competition in a very sort of quick way. But I think one of the problems Facebook's got is young people drifting away from it. It's it's not just a few more social network uh, rivals. Need a, I think they need a passionate it, uh, tele, uh, networks evangelist. That's it. That's yeah, that's my first one. That's my first one in the betting pool. I mean, their mainstream once they start business hiring is, again, oh their mainstream business is arguably oh, is arguably yeah. dead in in twenty thirty years. What is dead? Their mainstream. Yeah, the main Facebook. When, when I think if you look at, if you ask the average sort of twelve thirteen year old, they say it's something old people do on the in the my evenings kids have on never been typewriter on style keyboards. You really? know. Yeah, my, my my kids are the same. They're like they they just think it's old fashioned, and, and actually, I was going to. That's what Granny oh, sends cool. her Facebook I love, I love holiday Facebook, photos. I love right? it. I mean, uh, I'll, well, I as, do as well. Our, 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 as pinballers, like Facebook's like our lifeline of communication. So yeah. they kill that. I'm in real trouble. Actually, that is good to be reminded of because you know, in in a pure social networking sense, and to, like I don't use it that much. I'll if there's a some nice pictures of me and the family I'll stick it up for, yeah. for my relatives to see it. Exactly. But it and then I'll occasionally put up some current affairs stuff if I'm just feeling belligerent that but day you know usage has carried on going up you know there was this concern about right. people ebbing you know leaving it and, and if they don't sort of get 18 year olds onto it then eventually you know as older people you know die and stop using yeah. I mean, we're a long way from that probably but um, and we'll be all getting the, phones but 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 if you look, I looked at the last investor report, and they're still going up in terms of sort of monthly active users and everything. Well, it's just that advertisers does that include WhatsApp or not? That might. I don't, this is a thing. What, how I think WhatsApp's is, a bit yeah. of a special case. And Instagram. Yeah, well, WhatsApp's, well, WhatsApp's Instagram. very. Yeah. I mean, messaging apps are very hard to monitor. But, I mean, I don't. I'll be honest. With you, I struggle with Instagram. It's like. Yeah, yeah I've, I've tried a couple of it. couple of attempts at doing an Instagram. So I can't be asked for this. No, yeah. but then but then people who are into it are properly into it. I know. It's yeah. Like, yeah. They take nine pictures of of their their, their you know their new key, key, key rings. Yeah. and I'm like, what? But yeah. but they're they're, I mean, their big problems are like because we're sort of entering a recession. Unfortunately, <laughs> advertising is one of the things yeah. that goes, yeah. and that's hurting them. And then the other thing is they can't avoid the inflationary crisis that we're all in. So if you look at the, I looked at the profit and loss statement, you can see everybody's costs are going up for energy yeah. and things like that. And then they're just throwing a huge amount of money into R&D, which is obviously to try well, and specifically the, the to metaverse position stuff. themselves to the metaverse, which no one really knows. Whether, I mean, no one really knows what it's going to look like and if Facebook's going to get there first or somebody else's. And that's the that's the big gamble, isn't it? You know that that, that they've taken. Well, I thought so. in, in terms of quarterlies, when I wrote up, um, so um, so I wrote about the the job um, cuts, and then before that, I wrote about their quarterlies, and I just got a screenshot of one bit of their sort of accounting tables, <coughs> where it's sort of segment information. The R and D bit. Is it? Well, it, it's it's segments, and they basically they've only got two segments. They've got family of apps, yeah, which is Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, yeah, and then a they've tiny got, one, and then they've got Reality Labs, That's it, yeah. And you know, if you look, at, you know, their revenue, their revenue is um, this was what for the Q3, uh, their revenue was twenty seven billion, of which twenty seven billion was family of apps and. 285 million was Reality Labs. Yeah, but... It, I well, think hold on, let me just quickly finish. Um, and then and then you look at income brackets loss in that accounting bracketsy way. Um, family of apps, 9 billion. Reality Labs loss, 6.3 billion. Yeah. And they expect that to go up next year. And, you know, that's, that's where investors are shitting themselves. It's just the sheer amount of wedge they're throwing at this Reality Labs, which is the metaverse bit. Anyway, sorry, what were you Yeah, although say? I think some of the metaverse could be... I know, I know it sounds like it's a strict division between Reality Labs and Family of Apps, but I think conceivably some of the Metaverse stuff could be in Family of Apps in the future. Um, sure. They've not, they've not necessarily described it that way, but they, the R&D is up ridiculously. If you look at the breakdown of costs... Yeah, but a hell of a lot of that is Reality Labs, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, and, and apparently nobody's... At the moment, nobody's using it. People go on... You know, Oculus no. and use the the basic sort of. Metaverse We've gone on about loads of times on the pod, got, and they oh, and, they, and they're, they're quitting the platform. So, so as a gamer, 
Have you, have you got Oculus? Have you got one? No, no, my, no. My kids I have got, used it before. My kids yeah. have got a PlayStation VR thing. Oh, okay. So the, the, there's a there's a great game. It's a uh, crazy golf game, and I've actually done a done a team meeting on this crazy golf game because um, it's well, like it's the really old school days of having a meeting at a <coughs> golf course. Now yeah, doing it virtually. now doing it virtually, <laughs> and it actually worked pretty well. This is well. what it's supposed to be, isn't it? In but the I mean, I mean, yeah. the only thing is, is you're just like you, I mean, there's the metaverse. Um, was you know you with a coloured hat? It was no, right. and and it kind of wiggled a bit when you spoke. But the games, the games, a lot of fun. Actually, I, during COVID, I was in a global league where we were playing each other. Crazy, I was for me crazy times of the day because it was playing American players. But um, <clears throat> on the gaming side, I see it. But this notion of this duplicate, um, you know, digital world, digital world. Yeah. That, that uh, you know. Yeah. So do I have to? Does that mean if I'm you know, streaming Netflix in a duplicate world. I need another subscription. It's like all these kind of weird things that you well, the, the start, latest to, thing start is to ask. Surgeons will train in the metaverse yeah. before they're unleashed on real bodies. Always come, why Why are the use cases always <laughs> surgery? They pick the most <laughs> alarming, we mailed them high about, risk. We mailed them and say we got a barber app for them. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Back to me taking the piss out of Ian. It's absurd. Do you know, actually, this might amuse you. One of the most recurring stories that gets long tail traffic and gets comments is one I wrote where I think the headline was E persists with absurd use cases in its marketing. Yeah. Um, and, and I stand by it, but it's is interesting that, is that how... Is into trouble for? No, no, no. No, that was a different thing. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, but I stand by it because, you know, I obviously don't want to put you in a position where you've got to criticise any, any current um, colleagues, but... And maybe it works, you know, maybe I'm missing something. But, you know, having people landing a plane in their living room or, or, or people shaving at the top of a mountain, yeah, I understand the challenge. We've spoken about it on the pod before. Yeah. I understand the challenge of trying to trying to create something sort of visually um, emotive and evocative <clears throat> out of what is a sort of pipe of data. But, yeah, but you love I also reserve the right like to that. take the piss out oh, of that's, their That's effort. exactly why you love that they do it. Well, yeah, you know, you know, you know, we do like a feel-good one where everyone's happy and jumping about. and. Well, that, that's, that's how they used to do it, isn't it? Yeah, and, they, and they're just, like, everyone just took the piss out of them as well. Do you know yeah. what I'm looking forward no, to? No, I sympathise. This, uh, it's difficult. This thing I'm going to in a couple of weeks uh, in, in Ipswich, this festival of robotics. Oh, ah, yeah. Because I've got this vision of, like, you know, dancing C-3PO's. And, no, you, that, and, and let me tell you, that event will be fantastic. Definitely worth going to. Have you been to Astral Park before? No, I've never been there before. Oh, wow, you're in for a treat. I think I'm well, now that you're talking about uh, I, I think you I should, should revisit go. it. It's, it's just hard go. for me to 23rd get out of, of November, I think. It's, sure it's, it's uh, so Lisa yeah. and the team that run that, every event that, that they do up there is phenomenal. We've got a big new drone center. Um, they, they got a huge amount done. I was amazed because I'd been there before COVID and then I was there COVID, and actually the, the development of the park has been absolutely fantastic. And and actually, that's one thing at Astral Park is, is a kind of a jewel in BT's crown that's often not for not remembered uh, Tim Whitley who who runs the team there um, they, they will have some really cool stuff up there from not just BT stuff but they, they they'll bring a lot of players um, was, was Tim in. there when we when we met you for that round table ages ago that was, no he wasn't Paul was there who, who oh, was in Tim's it, team yeah, yeah. Um, Paul's moved on actually he's, he's retired but um, the 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 it, it will definitely be worth going to. If it's not, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll buy you a beer. It involves going on a, on an early morning train up to from Liverpool Street up to Ipswich, yeah. basically. So you'd have to. It's you'd quite to get early bed, like, to get to get from Hitchin It might still be challenge. dark outside. You might have to come and stay in London overnight the night before. Or go stay in, stay in Ipswich. <laughs> or you could yeah, do that. Okay. Go to Ipswich. There's a few good bars. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Um, anyway, Sorry, I, Tim. I tried to sell it, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not. It's not Tim's fault that I'm a lazy bastard, and I'm quite busy. These, these um, Facebook layoffs. The thing yeah. I'd say is that they're um, they're they're not going to be much smaller than they were sort of this time last year. I think they've hired. Well, quite. Like, so yeah. I, I link to your table. <laughs> in fact, I, I'll find your table. I can't, I can't remember what's on my table, it's but thirteen percent. Yeah, I know it's thirteen percent, but what I'm saying is, if you go back one they've year, they've grown about thirteen percent. They, 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 they've hired about forty thousand people in yeah. two years. Facebook is ridiculous. Thing the, thing the, that's, the thing that's that's frustrating about that is, um, and and I kind of look at it like, well, if if people are telling you there's going to be a big opportunity and you don't take it, you look like an idiot on the other side. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And and I think, you know, the, you know, it was kind of. 
there was there was a, an, an element of momentum that was fueling this, and and the job market went insane, and and you know we we lost a few good people in BT to you know the the fangs as we call them. Um, the the because and they were offering money that we're like you know our our business model just them. doesn't support yeah. it yeah. it's just not it's not that we we'd love to pay you more but yeah you know we sell broadband for twenty quid a month so um and and that the market just went nuts and I and I kind of I, I kind of wonder if there's a secondary impact of all this which is you know okay there's there's pe- people being laid off which is terrible in fact a friend of mine in New York his wife Brenda has worked at Works at Facebook, got the email yesterday, um, and he pinged me about it. I was like, "Sorry to hear that." And and, and the thing that he was a bit frustrated about is it seemed a bit, you know, it felt like the to him it felt like there was a almost like a lottery of 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 how they went about it. I don't know how they decided yeah. it, yeah. but that you know to suddenly pick thirteen thousand people and send an email to feels challenging to me, and and I'm sure in Europe they'll have had to have done a you know, gone well, down I a different use, process. You know, you know the word. I presume you know what the literal definition of the word decimate is. Yes. And it often gets misused. And I and I made a sort of geeky point of using it semi-accurately, <laughs> in so much as they did get the rid of time. about about one in ten people. Um, and yeah, I take your point because the thing about decimation, it comes from Roman legions, and they punish errant lo- Roman legions by killing one in ten random dudes there, just to sort of go that will learn you. Um, you do sometimes get the impression that, that when they've got to make this gesture to investors, because I think, PA, you said earlier their share price went up when they announced that. Is that mm-hmm. correct? And often investors I mean, do. They were in the canyon and it yeah, yeah, tipped yeah. up a bit. Yeah. Tipped up a bit. But, uh, but often investors do respond positively to job, job cuts because they, they're concerned with margins and profit and shit like that. Um, but, yeah, it does feel a bit arbitrary and random. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I kind of just hope that the tech job market doesn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't have some knock-on effects to this because um, uh, that would be bad for us all in the medium term, you know. Um, but you know, I think they've they, they got to at the end of the day, they, you know, they, if what was expected isn't here, yeah, I don't think Something any of us give. are surprised by that. They got to do something. But um, they're, they're they're obviously not the only ones. No, I mean, so the, so there's. Yeah. I mean, Twitter's well, Twitter's, Twitter's a sort ge- of exceptional yeah, it's circumstance. It's generated more coverage than it deserves, considering it's a tiny little company and it isn't really big tech, but it's well, obviously owned so by some, some guy about, who attracts attention. So <laughs> the interesting thing about Twitter, obviously, it's all about Elon Musk. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And the interesting thing about it, you know, back to my sort of recurring theme about people at the top, not necessarily having, you know, not being flawless, let's say. Um, you know, Elon Musk obviously is deserving of a lot of respect as an entrepreneur, as a wealth creator, as a as a visionary, as someone who's just created businesses out of fuck all. But it does seem a bit mental at times, doesn't he? And and the way he's dealing Impulsive. with Twitter, I mean, we, or, 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 or capricious or something like that, it he had sort of Twitter foisted on him by, by making this sort of impulsive bid at the start of the year. Yeah. And then, re- and then having buyer's remorse. Yeah, I think he got and home then, one night, had a few too many old fashioned, you know I mean? and went, "Oh, this sounds like a good thing to do." He just went, "Fuck it," and 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 he's got that sort of ego. None of us have done that before. <laughs> he's he's got that geek ego thing of of having to make his bid have some little clever. I think in the states they've got a numerical code that's associated with the Gange trade, and and everyone interpreted. Four twenty, yeah, four twenty. There we go, uh, mm. and everyone interpreted the precise value of his bid to have four twenty baked into it. So he's trying to be all cute, and I think he does like that, and he likes the attention. He goes on Rogan, smokes a joint. Or, no, but no, but that's when he got in trouble with the SEC. When yeah, he said he could take over Tesla at four twenty. Oh, okay. and then he, he says, actually, no, though. I don't. And then he got fined like sixty. Yeah, so he, yeah. he he likes to walk that fine line, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was back farther a little bit recently. <laughs> But then, you know, I mean, we don't, no one knows what's going on in the bloke's head. No. But, but we can speculate. But That's what we do. I've, anyway. m- I've met Elon Musk twice. Oh, right. Let me tell Go you. On, I think um, I think he's having a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I genuinely think... It's an expensive bit of fun. Yeah, it's an expensive bit of fun. And actually, and one, and sorry, those that have lost their jobs or leaving or not happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to... You, you know, that's a shit show for you. I, I, I got huge... Um, thoughts with so, you. So the, the latest is that he's getting Simple. canning about half the fucking headcount. Yeah, and 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 you know, look, that's for those people that'll be terrible. But they're 
you know, I genuinely believe if you're good at what you do, you'll find another job, and I'm I'm sure that they will. But a lot of people believe in. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Um, <laughs> although I'm, I'm starting to worry if I made the right choice for all this doomsday. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, the, uh, my sense is, you know, but if you put your, you know, if you've worked there for five years and put your life into it, and all of a sudden the world changes like that, it, it must be pretty crap for those people, um, and and I feel for them. But. I, 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 I haven't. I've met him twice. I've spoke to him, and I genuinely think he knows what he's doing. Uh, there's no kind of wacky professor or evil henchman type. Mm. He, he he speaks kind of, um, you know, like a like a sensible, intelligent person would talk to you. And and I I, I think he's got a plan for Twitter. You know, this he's he's been a a, a Twitter user for a long time yeah. he's probably been thinking about this a long time he's got it written down everyone thinks he's just turned up and made all these decisions he's been thinking about this oh, for no, a definitely. long time and he's really interested in, in the in the broader sociological side of it rather than it is a, as a business opportunity because yeah. it's not a great business opportunity in and of itself no but but i think there are things that you know again hindsight you know we we, we mentioned vines at the, earlier on you know they turned that off literally as tiktok turned on um, mm, did they yeah. miss something there? It feels like it. it, does. it the, the, you know, in the way that video's gone, and you mentioned, you know, you know, people thinking Facebook's old. You know, people think TikTok's new because it's video and it's visual. You know, I, 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 I love Twitter. I mean, it's got, it's nearly got me shot like more, more <laughs> times than I than I know. But yeah, you don't but, mind um, getting involved, do you? No, but um, it, it's kind of you know, I, I do think it has this kind of town. S- this this town yeah. centre kind of view town about square. it, yeah, 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 town square, and 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 I do like that about it. But you know, you got to be responsible on it, of course, as well. You, and, and Which I, is you why know, I hardly ever touch it. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, never never tweet when you're drunk. Um, <laughs> is my advice. But um, the the you know, I think I, I kind of wish what Elon would do would be like, here's my plan. Here's what I'm going to do. Mm. Here's why it makes sense. Because I think we would be thinking, you know, slightly different. The, the challenge is, is before this, he, you know, he made some comments about Twitter. Oh, I'm going to unban Trump, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do yeah. that. And, you know, he, he kind of probably started off on the wrong foot. But I, I think he's trying to. I think he is trying to do something with with an asset that probably hasn't moved on enough. Um, you know whether whether or not it's right or wrong, I don't know. But it is, you know. I think I think that's the problem, though. You're not moving on because it's yep. still very similar to what it. I know there's, you can get you know integrated videos in it now and watch yeah, those. But, in, and there's that feature where you can almost post an essay on it in bullet point form, and, which and I've they're doing really live got, as well but, now. So, but it's still in essence the kind of text base yeah. social media service is quite basic compared with what yeah, some I mean, other people I, are doing when I came out of it the, you, you sent, the, the main way of sending tweets to it was SMS yeah. um, you know and it's still got a lot of those SMS limitations right. but yeah. but I feel that um, God I, I didn't know that yeah I, I feel that I mean I think you can still do it actually yeah. even to this day um, but I think that, that it will come good I, I think my, my sense is, is that and this is this is hard. If he didn't buy it, what would happen to it, right? Versus he's bought it. What's he going to do with it, right? <clears throat> you see, I mean, I think the one thing I say he's definitely paid top dollar for it. Um, yeah. You know, and and I think, it, you know, I look at it and think, how do you make a return on that scale of money? Mm. That looks that does look hard. It does. Um, but yeah. you know, he's starting I, to question it too. If, yeah, well, I, I think bet, so. But he did say so. that it was never a. You know, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I think he said. I, actually, I don't know whether he said that before things started to go south or or, or afterwards. Well, it's but. tested his faith. I, I believe what he says about freedom of speech and, and the importance of a good public conversation. Yeah. yeah. And and, and, it, and there's clearly some very arbitrary censorship that goes on in it. You know what a lot of people don't understand about censorship is it always comes down to the question of who decides. It's yeah. not whether or not censorship is in and of itself bad. It's who decides. But and there's a lot of power in the hands of whoever decides. I, I also believe him when he, you know, I mean, I remember watching a, a, a fairly good interview he did actually with Justin Springham of um, right of the of the GSMA. But Justin Wallach. chatted to Musk, did he? He interviewed Musk at the at the um, at the, yeah, the, the Mobile right. World Congress at was the, yeah. the one like, the one where there was only about twenty thousand oh, yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. But the high the highlight of that was that they and I remember watching it online. They did, he did an interview with um, with Musk and and it was, was all, it was all it was all obviously about Starlink. But I think he said on that that I would get involved in things where I, I feel like there's a a problem to solve or there's something that mm, I can yeah. do that yeah, moves like a boring things company in California yeah like, like we want to colonise Mars because at some point we need to find somewhere else to live kind it's of definitely thing. It's a like big a, picture it's guy, a very yeah. big picture <laughs> thing Absolutely. but it's but I, I think he wouldn't make that up it's, it's not no, I don't you, think it's bullshit and, and I mean you know, if, if you've got a 
one of Tesla's factories or you go to SpaceX, it's a properly professional outfit. I mean, it, it, they are, you know, you look at the, the, the current face of, of Elon Musk versus what those outfits, how they run. I mean, you know, SpaceX is a space night. Like, you know, I visited them and, and wow, it's just, an, it's, it's, it's a level of, you know, engineering and orchestration and planning and management mm. and and you know it's just it's all brilliant and yeah they've had a few issues um but they've also had a massive amount of success and, and he must be an inspiring you know, guy to work for yeah because he's such a big <clears throat> figure well, he's, he's got a vision right yeah and, and, and it, but even on even on i think the yeah the interview with justin was talking about starlink and he was like the main the main thing at the moment is not to go bankrupt because most satellite companies have in the past yeah. they've had and, yeah. and it was like he, you sort of think there's easier ways to make money for someone with that kind of money. You could go and put it it's into a bit of a sucker yeah. for punishment. You could, you could go and put it into something else and get a return more easily. But he he obviously wants to solve these big problems. And I've got so. a Starlink dish at home. You know, it's a, if you're if you're in the middle of nowhere and you've got no alternatives, it's a really good service. Mm. Um, and and you know whether it scales, I think there's still some questions about it. But I. I I have to. I believe that he's got a plan, and it will it will yeah. start to become more obvious, and then we'll, everyone will be it will flip from, you know, chief twit to chief genius. That's that's my my yeah. expectation. I just have a question about the SpaceX. Can you pause the membership and just like I don't need it now and pause it? <coughs> or you have to keep paying. N- not yet, Ugh. unfortunately. Yeah. So I so wow. I so I bought it. Um, it's it's not cheap actually. It's like five hundred bucks for the dish. And then a hundred and ninety quid a month. Um, the longer I bought it, it to, to get... I bought it to, to just to have a play with it really. But the longer it, has... it takes you to get another job, the more this can I pause? Yeah. It can I... <laughs> will become relevant. Yeah. I'll, I'll need to fill it out when I go to the job center. I've got Starlink. <laughs> BT5 are, um, I've got all these bills I need to pay. I'm, I'm going to be in real trouble. The uh, the government's uh, um, bill is going to get higher. No, um, so but it, but it, they have brought in something that you can pause, which is nomadic. So you can press the button to make it nomadic, take it and stick it in your car, go somewhere, and then use it there. So I I go to Great Yarmouth with my grandkids for. Um, Holidays, we stay in this kind of posh caravan, mm. um, like Phil McKinney. You know <coughs> Phil McKinney? I do not. No. Former CTO at uh, what's he called? Uh, Hewlett Packard. Ah, okay. Uh, he's at Cable Labs now, and uh, he, I was ah. at this cable show, and he has a massive like. You know the the walls expand kind of. Style oh, okay, an RV, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this, and he has a s- yeah. This is more dish. fixed, but but when you go there, I mean, they've got a Wi-Fi network that l- literally taps out entirely because everyone should yeah. watch Netflix at five yeah. o'clock when they're eating their burger. <laughs> yeah. And um and I got fed up with it, so I, I I'm I'm you know one that our the grandkids love their bit of Netflix, and if it's not working, they're ah! so I took my dish with me <clears throat> and just plugged it in. You got 80 max? I was uh, 120. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's you know, but, oh but I don't know how many users there are. Um, in the US, yeah. um, there was a report out that it's starting to really get congested. Wow. I mean, I, I don't need it. I've got fiber at home. Mm. So, but um, that ability to have, you know, a, a really great service um, was, 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 was you were really the, useful. You were probably the only person in the UK using it at that time. In Maybe I, I, I've seen a few. F- I mean, there's a there's like a Getting thread the somewhere. Beam. There's a thread yeah. somewhere, that, and there's there's quite a few folks that have got it. I mean, I kind of bought it as you know, oh, working from home, we need a backup. I've got also got f- um, e five G, of course, but um, if if there's a power cut, you know, this mm. and I've got UPS and solar, which I have. That'll still work. So, when when um, when the apocalypse comes, yeah, I'll for... have good broadband and have Netflix. Um, you're if nothing else. You'll, you'll be, you'll be <laughs> the sort of person who'd be a good ally when the apocalypse. Comes. No, no, you'll be the first house to be raided. Probably, I'll be. I'll be <laughs> no. Government will be going, we'll did, have that stuff. Did you ever see the, the LA riots um, years ago, the LA riots? Um, I, I'll be like the Koreans, so go, 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 go oh, Google yeah, it. On the roof. Go Google it. Yeah, yeah. on the roof. Yeah, yeah. That'll be me. Listen, uh, we're nearly out of sorry, time. Sorry, we're nearly out of time. I was going to do, I've just, I'm just inventing a new feature of the podcast on the fly because we're nearly out of time and I wanted to chuck a couple of things at, at Neil, but he's only got about five minutes to answer each one. Quick oh, no. Quick so, fire. So, well, our, quiz, our quick fire section is now called Is It Bollocks? <laughs> so I'm going to pick a thing, and the baiting question is Is it bollocks? Oh, no. So, open ran. 
Oh man, it's it's. And you've got uh, five minutes to cover this yeah. massive topic. So, um, look, look, I think. Um, oh, I've got a bit more. Is it, is it? Is having more radio vendors a good thing? Yes. Is it? Is Open Rang going to change the world or make you know make some massive change to our industry? Absolute bollocks. It's not definitely right. Not. So, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, so that's and more think, or less our I, angle, isn't and it? And I think there's, I think there's, I think there's some evidence of it. So you know, <clears throat> the last two announcements um, from our friends at Vodafone saying they're working with Samsung and Nokia. You know, I look at that and think that's because it's hard and they know what they're doing. Um, mm. And they're so, integrated vendors. Yeah, and and you know, I kind of I, when I saw that, I was one, I wasn't surprised, and actually we announced that we were working with Nokia. I don't know, four or five months ago, so it's good to see them following us eventually. Oh, meow. Yeah, um, but it, you know, doing. Re- I mean, in telco, there, we have some workloads that people really misunderstand how hard they are. Radio is one. It's so difficult. Well, as optical, really difficult thing to get right. And you know, th- to think that you can just knock up a few bits of open source, plug in a Raspberry Pi, and press a button, and you've got radio. It's just fanciful, <laughs> but that's pie. that's what people. Well, I that, mean, I, I've seen people. I've got this Raspberry Pi open run. I was like, "Who no, literally? You weren't being hyperbolic." I know. I, I, I tell you what, I'm going to roll that out right to where you live, so that if you need an ambulance, how how certain are you going to be that the ambulance mm. is going to turn up now? With this five quid bit of kit. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's it's that's well, it, the challenge I've got with it's, it. It's you know, it's the the market direction that it goes in, really, because like you say, Samsung and Nokia, well. They were already here, you know. I mean, Scott and I were talking about this recently. If, if all Open RAN does is to maybe open up a role for Samsung because Huawei's not that, there, that'll anymore. be great. That'll yeah, be, that's Samsung good. have got but some. But it may well have happened. Anyway. But it may well have happened. Yeah, anyway. I, I, I just, you know, yeah. yeah I, I think it would have done. But I mean, uh, look, you know, the, the other thing is, is the cycle time. Open RAN's time is not now. It's, it's if if there is a six G, and, and I kind of hope there isn't. Um, not because I don't want I want technology to move on, but yeah, I don't think we need, need some big glory that. day six yeah. day where we're all panicking yeah. to launch it. Yeah. Um, I, but you know, I, I kind of you've w- covered the six G. <clears throat> is it bollocks? Question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's all right. Um, I think. <laughs> um, I think yeah, I mean, I've got two more minutes now. Um, I think. Um, <laughs> I think. Um, I think there's some. The you know the the, the notion of driving more capability is great. But I really want to see more silicon vendors come in. You know, even if you've got five people that are in making radios, but there's only running the same silicon, I don't call that diversification. And, and actually, I think the government, the DCMS, have actually really started to understand that mm. and are now starting to look at that, which is great to see. But Ian, you've but, written well, I have, a lot about the, that recently, haven't you? Yeah, but the silicon guys, I mean... They are the they are the big US chip companies, yep. aren't they? Marvel, yep. And yep. Nvidia, yep. Qual- I mean, Intel. there's, there's Arm, the two Intel. camps of ARM and yep. Intel, but it's yep. still. What, what do you think of? Um, what do you think of Edge Q? Do you know much about them at all, or because because they, they, they seem to be a little bit different to me, you know, in, tr- in terms of trying to do something with Risk Five rather than the yeah, no, the look, other systems. So, and so they, uh, look. I, when I talk about silicon, uh, you know, yeah, we've got AMD, we've got Intel, we've got all these guys. We need more of those players. So, yeah. so, so someone like that, I welcome them. Yeah. Um, I kind of like, how do we help them? But, but also, I've got to, you know, run a network that if someone phones nine nine nine, they need an ambulance that it works. You know, and that's, it's, it's a really extreme use case, but it's the one that matters to that person at that time. That, that in a mission critical world, does this stand up? You know, or there's a, a riot, or a or a or a thing where people are on their phones, or there's a, a bomb goes off, or you know, all those usually terrible situations. Does the network perform? You know, COVID would be another one, and and you know, if 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 they've got that capability, you know, companies like BT, I'm sure will want to will want to work with them, but. You know, I think part of what's turned up in an open run is, well, you know, it's a pilot. And, you know, one one of our, our um, guys made a gag about open run, which is they've got more pilots than BA. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, and it and it's and it's true. You know, and I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm. Oh, we're testing this thing. I was like, why are you testing Thank that? Thank God, though, that gives us something to cover on a quiet news day. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it, another open round pilot. That'll do. Get that one out the door. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 
I mean, and, but there are some things that open that I really like the controller side of it. I'm really, and that allows us to do more automation. Sign me up for that. We're doing a lot of work on that in BT. It's a bit like the STN controller thing. Yeah, and and I think uh, you know, and my the thing we've been pushing at BT is is the the reason that that struggled with on SD WAN is is the controllers were too tied to the devices. We need some abstraction so that if I upgrade the controller, the device doesn't break, or if I upgrade the device, the controller doesn't break. It's simple stuff like that. Yeah. It's one more, Ian. I'll share it with you. Okay, no, I think I think we've got Get time. For, I anyway, think we've got so. time for one more. One more. Is it bollocks? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm going to go with public cloud. Public cloud. So, <laughs> again, <laughs> another another, another, another really <laughs> easy to summarise. <laughs> summarise. I mean, look, to slightly narrow it down, you know, the the trend of um, operators, not just operators, but obviously in in our day job, that's what we focus on. Operators moving more and more of their stuff to the public cloud, more and yep. more of their infrastructure, more and more of, of the stuff that, that they used to just have in their own little dungeons. Yep. Um, you know, is that bollocks, Ian? Ian? Ian. Neil. <laughs> Neil, yeah. Or Ian as he well. Just you I'll have that one. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so yeah, maybe, um, I should, maybe I should give this to you. So look, the, the public cloud, let me, let me get the praise of the public ga- cloud guys out of the way. They've done some great stuff. They've given us some capabilities that we wouldn't have had, things like Kubernetes and signal control. And, you know, there's some amazing technology that they've came out with. And <clears throat> But they're, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say what I said a few minutes ago. There are some things in telco that are unique to us that coming along with, a, you know, a one-size-fits-all bus just isn't going to work. So um, right now... You know, I think anyone putting their 4G or 5G core into public cloud is brave. Um, you know, and and you know, if you talk to some of the <laughs> that biggest, sounds like a euphemism for something else. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, and um, if you Google it, you'll find no. Um, <laughs> the, 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 um, the 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 key thing, <clears throat> but but actually, I I think the whole. So the public cloud guys think that there's there's big money in telco and you know just look at our results. There's no big money in telco, at least not at the moment. Could there, could there be big money in telco? For sure. It's how do we partner to do stuff for customers? Forget yeah, back no one, to your no one core point. cares about the core or you know no one's ever busted any e shop. I want an e phone because you're running open round. You're doing disaggregation and you're yes. in the cloud. No one does that, right? I want a standalone call or I'm going somewhere. Yeah. Else. Uh, wait a minute. You guys aren't deploying RFC number six. You know, no one does that. So, hey, you know, public cloud guys, because you're geniuses at coming up with cool stuff that, with some of our telco reliability stuff that we plug into it and, and, and extending it into places where, you know, I mentioned this earlier, but how do we go beyond the smartphone? How do we take the network into places the network's never been and health and safety and medical? And I think if we work together, we can solve tons of stuff in that. But, you know, actually, we know how to run the mobile core. We know how to run our apps. We know how to do this stuff. We're very good at it. Um, in fact, we're brilliant at it. So... I want to work with the, the public cloud guys to do stuff that's value add for customers and and fiddling about in the core. Is I'm it, not is sure it is a bit the of right, a worry right working thing. with them though, because um, you know these. I mean, you were talking earlier about you know BT becomes more automated and it frees up resources to do some of this other sexy stuff and. Someone sceptical would say, well, you know, there's dozens of operators, they're subscale compared with the hype, that's what they call the hyperscalers, yep. you know, they've got these enormous R&D budgets, they're going into all sorts of... Indi- Amazon, by the way, on that jobs table, employs something like one and a half million people. It's really, I mean, yeah. I know they're all... In a lot of them are warehouses, yeah. but, bunnies. But it, it, it's like, um, it's almost got to the point where you think, can anybody do anything anymore? That, <coughs> so, that, so, know, the adv- so the advantage the hyperscalers have is that they were born at a time where the government didn't have to own them. But if you added up all the incumbent telcos across the world, there's more than a million people working incumbent telcos, for sure. So when you think about it through that lens, it's, you know, everyone says, oh, they've got loads of money. I was like, to run the global telecoms infrastructure feels like a stretch to me. And also, why would they? There's, you know, we were talking earlier about how difficult the sector is right now. Um, You know, and, and, you know, I look at, you know, 
some of them that have built some great infrastructure. So some of the hyperscalers building some of the core infrastructure, Trump um, submarine cables, because they're the biggest users of them now. The, the internet's changed. Yeah. It used to be, yeah. if you you know anything on the internet went to America, that just isn't the way anymore. And and as a good thing, it's much more distributed. So we you know so telcos don't need to buy that kind of infrastructure anymore. We're we're tiny users of it. Um, the the stuff that you know G- Google building fiber, um, you know with um, Google Fiber, the great thing about that was is Google learned how hard it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and you know I was at a session where they were explaining how you know, you know they were talking about there was a guy from Google Fiber. That was like, you know how many homes patched on and he came out of a number and then I came out of a number. And we, I think we did twenty eight thousand today, and it was more than their number for the year. Yeah. And and you know that they've learned that actually this is this it's is that not, core competence is, thing of it like absolutely. what we were talking about with TV but and exactly. stuff earlier. But, but, exactly. but not not necessarily doing that, but the kind of sexy stuff on top. You know, is there so, is there an opportunity so, for anybody to do anything? I, I think I think look, you you've got even though we all look at the world through this global lens, you know, the world is not a global place. When you're you know, when you're walking down the street here, you're in London, you're in the UK, you're, there's things about the UK that are unique that I don't think you can run centrally. I just, I just don't, I don't believe it. I think it's too difficult. I think you've got to get to distribution. These big guys are never going to do that. I would, I would suggest, or might be happy to be quoted to be wrong on that. But they, but we are here, and we can be a route to that to those customers. We've got the right credentials with security, with capability. I genuinely think that if 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 we work together more for the benefit of customers, there's a win-win for all of us. Now, some of the you know some companies have got we're going to own everything, and and I get why they want that. Um, but are they going to be able to really achieve the difference that they want to be able to achieve by sticking in that mode? Well, I think the next few the next year, if this you know this big downturn's going to be anything that that we believe in. Um, I think we'll see whether that's true or not. But I think yeah. all the, I think our, I think telcos are were were naturally nervous because we see these players move in a way that you know we're jealous of in terms of pace sometimes. Yeah. But even even with that, well, and money. Well, m- money. But again, <laughs> bring all the global telcos together. How much money have we got? How much Good money point. we invest? So you're, in? you're saying that it's, it's much more condensed into a few players. In, yeah, in the big tech, and, yeah, and 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 also. Do you, so 20 years from now, do you think there'll be three hyperscalers only? I don't know. It's hard to imagine where the new entrants will so, be now. So when, so when, you know, so when BT was the only telco in the 80s, would yeah, you yeah. believe that BT's well, the only telco? No, I don't, because I think we'll end up with another sort of standard oil type scenario where they end up getting busted up. But Possibly. Uh, but I also, I, I also think that, so, I mean, there's, there's, uh, we spoke about this in the last pod, but there's a challenge around compute power. We're really hitting the, the the roof of it, and I think that this one size fits all is a model that's going to shrink. And I think you might see some niche players come yeah, in. That we're I the agree. cloud for cars. We're the cloud for, right. you know. Oh, I'd welcome that. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think, I, and again, I think if you do that, because you're the cloud for cars, you're thinking more about customers and how they buy cars and what they need in cars, and you'll do a better job. I, I genuinely believe that. So, I think we're we're. At, you know, in the evolution of the public cloud, the eggs just cracked. That's where I think we are. And yeah. I think that the, the whole bird has got to develop and fly before it's before we've really seen what the, 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 war, the word hyperscaler means. Uh, it's not, and, and look, I mean, when you look at what they've achieved in, the, in a short space of time, you know, it's, it's, you're right to be nervous about it and right to think about it. But I kind of think about it, okay, okay how can I leverage that? That's, how, that's the way I look at it. And I, I, I would challenge our industry to think, how, mo- how do we leverage it more? And how do we work more with them? But don't come with me. Don't come and say, oh, Neil, put your cloud here. You put your core here. It'll solve all your problems. It won't. It won't even get it. Yeah, in fact, it's not, made it worse. It's, it's, it's not a panacea. It's, it's, it's just not going really- to help us. And we've done it. And it works. And... You know, life is good, and you're relinquishing control. I, I think, I think we're more or less out of time. Um, I quite, I'm quite enjoy that. Is it bollocks segment? Am I? Um, <laughs> you need a, you need a theme I mean, tune, like guy with a banjo. <laughs> 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 is it bollocks? <laughs> 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 him have, a little, <laughs> have a little sting for it. Um, I mean, obviously, Neil's considered a nuanced responses show what a crude instrument it is, because of course you can't conclude that something's bollocks or not. Yes. But that's half the joke, isn't it? Is Indeed. this sort of binary <laughs> point? Um, but look, uh, it's great to have you back. Um, Thanks for inviting me. I, I certainly, I mean, you have an open invitation in general, but it would certainly be great to catch up with you when you know what you're doing next um, and hear all about that. Um, but, you know, honestly, 
um, as I said several times on this pod, just having having people who've got your experience at, at the sort of sort of C-suite strategic level of things, I think is incredibly instructive, just to know how things work or, or don't yeah. work. Yeah. Um, so so thanks again for coming in and uh, and good luck with your job search, mate. Thank you. <laughs> if you're looking for anyone, you can email. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, I'll leave it there. So uh, thanks a lot for listening and make sure you join us for the next one.